Hello and welcome to Everyday Journal number 142, your favorite, most deceptively named bi weekly legacy podcast. Today's show is brought to you by Colin Garassi, who doubled his Patreon support this week. Thank you so much, Colin. If you want to support the running of the show directly, you can support us on patreon.com slash everyday channel. By the way, special shout outs to Dukes on Twitch, who just this week not only celebrated his 32nd, I want to say, birthday, but also 10 years of. Is it making content or or playing legacy? It's one of the two. Maybe I think both it was at the playing same legacy. Time. Playing legacy for ten years, awesome. Another decade in the format. And... Ten years of casting green suns in it. Heck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah that, that, that sounds like something. So yeah, guys. Today we we are back from Four Seasons Winter. Dude, I I had such an amazing time. But 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 you guys also did some other stuff, uh, which just <laughs> we're gonna talk about in a moment. Uh, actually, let's get straight into that. Uh, how have you guys been? Um, we you you actually did the same thing for for a while, right? We did kick us off, Kai. You go first. <laughs> well, I, I, pro. Co- I dude, I co- I copy paste Calum Smith's plan after the Four Seasons. Uh, so I went to a ski, I went uh, to a skiing vacation in Austria for the first time. But it felt like I accidentally went to like a pro ski area because I was literally the worst. Like, dude, everyone, everyone dude. at ski places is really good. It's like you watch these little kids that are like eight years old, like fly dude, past you, and you're like, How "It you is do that? insane, dude!" Like it kind of felt like if you go to the pro tour for the first time and you see like, people are casting <laughs> the brains with the ponders and things, and you're like, you barely want to like cast a, a, I don't know, a slate of hand. Here's my crush you know, of like, worms, dude. Yes, yes, dude. You, I was. <laughs> Damn, I was like so behind, so far behind in like anything. It was a little off season, I gotta say, because um, at the beginning of March is like typically not the the season where you would expect a lot of like, you know, like regular tourists maybe or people who do it for, for fun. I think like, dude, those people were actually damn serious about. I mean, if you skiing. go to Austria, right? That's just basically the skiing capital of Europe. Uh, even though I guess the people in, in like Switzerland and France will dis- disagree. Okay, okay. Yeah, they'll disagree. I'm oh, totally. <laughs> dude, like, and especially for for some someone like me who went to skiing vacation for in Japan for the past eight years, and all I saw in Japan were like. 20 year old girls doing like Instagram pictures and they didn't even move their asses. Like they were just stuck there taking photos all day long. I don't, you you, you I don't... basically ride up the mountain that does like the Instagram posing post and then you just you ride the mountain down again. You don't even need to be able to ski or something. Oh, they, <laughs> they, they, probably like like the shit. they probably like took like the, yeah, the, the lift down stair, downwards maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that was that was crazy. But you'd, you've been a few times before or like you've been Second? skiing before? Oh yeah, I yeah. like I started when I was seven. Okay, but the problem, nice. the problem is though, um, in Japan, maybe a lot of people might already know that, but um, you don't have a lot of holidays per year. In fact, you only have ten days, on average, which is lower than almost anywhere else. And you're not expected to take all of them, right? You 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 don't really take them, like any of them. Um, you're not a team player if you don't. Right. Dude, that sounds so fucking toxic. Seriously. Yeah. It it really is. But here's the thing. I'm um. These are like the times when when I when I say I'm German and not Japanese, you know. So it's, so I take like full advantage of That's that. The both and... worlds. Oh, goes, yeah. goes to your like Japanese employer. Sorry, I'm German. I need a. I, 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 need some, I need some extra German holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never been Japanese. <laughs> no, no, no. So, but, see, then you you see him walking around like in lederhosen and like you know, <laughs> like the one day. Yeah. Kai just comes to the office one day with like huge steins of beer. Oh man. Actually, oh, Kai, man. do you own lederhosen? I. No, not no, yet. Me neither. You not know, yet. you know. One but, day we should actually like get Lederhosen and, and use that in a team tournament or something. Uh, dude, <laughs> oh, I would God. probably look terrible in Lederhosen. Actually, actually but... Callum, what's like, tr- what's some <sighs> traditional um garment or whatever you would call that in in like London? Oh, we'd get, we'd, or England? It'd have to be the um beef eater costume, right? What, what seriously is that like a, a real thing? Uh... <laughs> Am I supposed to Google that or or is it just like total bullshit? Beef eater costume? What the fuck? I've never heard. Yeah, about yeah. That. Beef eater costume. <gasps> the oh, red you're thing. right. It's completely fucking ridiculous. So I don't know why, but the guys I play Warhammer with as well, the team, they love stupid costumes. So shout out to Patrick, kind of, who's always trying to get us to wear like stupid <laughs> hats, stupid team things. And I'm just not about that at all. So you guys can wear your your things. I, I just can't do it. I don't know. I'm happy to make fun of myself. I'm happy to look stupid, sound stupid. I just can't wear silly clothes and outfits. But, but you know, that's like silly, right? That's not supposed to like, but because Lederhosen, Lederhosen does, that's like traditional, like what everybody No, Lederhosen wears, I know, so but like, yeah. you know, in the context we'd be wearing it at a team tournament though. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. like most people who, who wear Lederhosen are pretty damn serious about about German, like... As, as mean, would I be, surely. Tradition. 
Yeah. Honestly, like I think the people who wear it the most are actually like outsiders who come to Munich for Oktoberfest and then they, they usually rent them because they're way too expensive. You get proper ones. Like mm -hmm. if you want to get like proper a proper Bavarian outfit, can easily run you down like 1K or something. Jeez. Oh, that's an yeah. underground C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kai walks into the store like, here, have my underground C. Take my card, please. Come on, bring me your finest garment. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, the, that was actually kind of funny, right? I was in Berlin for the for the trade fair. I, I, I felt like, ah, should I really go? Should I not go? I'm not so sure. Because I only wanted to go like for one day because there were a couple of people I wanted to, to meet and there were some important people I would meet for the first time. But also I had a lot of work in, back in Munich. So I was like, ah, I'm not really sure if I want to go. And then Kai told me, you know what? That's going to be the double up legacy on that first time was like say no like, more <laughs> like yeah. jump into the train <laughs> went to a trade fair for a day had a great time there and then the evening went to uh, uh brett brett i see i'm pronouncing it the english way brettspielplatz <laughs> brettspielplatz <laughs> in uh in berlin and had the legacy and after the legacy kind of was like oh by the way next morning i'm actually going skiing like what <laughs> it's just, just sounded like the most random thing like somebody <laughs> <laughs> like as if somebody had sent you a message in the evening. Oh, by the way, Kai, you want to like ride like ten hours into the into Austria and, and go skiing? Was yeah, it like dude, a that, last minute book thing? That that skiing trip, I literally decided like the day before. Like Sick. A, like a good yeah, a good a friend of mine was like, want to go? Question mark. That's and cool. I was like, do it. Yes, I, let's do it. Let's I do love it. last minute trips like that. Like it just puts the excitement level like one bit higher. Yeah, yeah, I just left when, when I asked Kai where, where exactly he's actually going. He was like, literally, I don't know. Just like the mountains. Love <laughs> it. Love, yeah, it. Love, like, it. Like, love it. Love it. Love it. Like the thing so is, like, places. also, I, I, I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was it was somewhere in Austria, but I cannot tell you, like, the, the exact location or even the place. How, how it, it had was mountains and, so and snow. I, I just didn't care. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you know, yeah. there were mountains. That That's it. That's all. That's totally my attitude when, like, very often I'll go away and someone will say, blah, blah, like, where did you yeah. go? What do you, what are your plans? Like, I don't really know where I'm going. I'm going it, to somewhere that has this or that, and I'm going to go and find it, and we'll see when we get there. And yeah, it's part of the fun. Snow about mountains. Okay, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, when I go to a GP tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> I once said that. I once said that. Like I, I had Matt, you know, our, our elusive fourth co-host of Everyday Channel, staying in Munich, and literally one evening he was like, uh, "Julian, there's a there's a GP on the weekend," which like he said that on a Thursday or something. Want to go to Copenhagen? I was like, "Which format is it even?" He was like, "Modern." Like, oh, That's basically okay, next whatever. Door to Germany. It's... Yeah, just like all across the country. And then we we took an ICE train all the way up to to Hamburg, and then they put the the entire fucking train on a boat. <laughs> and they shipped the train over to to some island because Copenhagen Damn. loves the islands, and and then yeah, we just continue from there. So yeah, spontaneous that's trips, a, amazing shit. Should do more of a, more of them. That, that's a spirit. Love it. Awesome. And and Callum, you went skiing as well, right? Yes. So much less spontaneous family holiday. So I'm finally, I felt like a really crazy last month. So we've talked about a bit of it in the the last couple of episodes, I think. But I first had a weekend where we had the Axion event, which was in Birmingham. And then the weekend after we had a Warhammer event, which was in Northampton. And then we had Four Seasons, which we'll touch on soon. And then I went straight from Four Seasons to skiing with my family in France. So it was, I feel like I've been barely at home the last month. So yeah, I was going to say like, it, it feels like you, you wasted your rent for the, for the last month, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you get um, value out of it? Yeah. Optimize your life? <laughs> my house, my housemates were away as well. So it was just empty house for a while, but, um, it feels good to be back like doing all these things is fun but it does feel good to be like you know just back into the flow of normal things for a little bit and then what was the bus ride from like Bologna all the way to to some place in France so I didn't tell you guys yet because you'd make fun of me but it'd be fun to stay on the podcast I uh so I was getting a bus at 1 a.m from Bologna to Geneva then I was getting a transfer from Geneva over to the French Alps and it was going to take like 11 hours on the bus and then the transfer was a few hours later once I get there oh, oh man. and so I get to the bus center it's like half 12 or whatever and it's like basically 15 minutes till the bus leaves and I show the guy my ticket and it doesn't scan and he like starts wagging his finger saying no 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 and I he doesn't speak English I my Italian is not good enough to understand so we start talking to each other in a uh, Google Translate <laughs> and he tells me my ticket was actually for yesterday no so, oh, yeah <laughs> Dude, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> what is I, it with us and travel arrangements? I don't know. Shit, man. I, I do this sometimes. It's, it wasn't the end of the world. Like, I don't know. It, the ticket was for 0. 0.55 and I just, like, you know, 55 minutes past the hour. I just got the days wrong and I booked it, like, three months ago because, or two months ago, because I just got all the four seasons sorted at the time and then I just didn't really think to check it. 
And it was fine. I had to buy a ticket right there and then. And then what happened was it wasn't going to get to Geneva in time for my transfer. But I had 10 hours on the bus to try and decide what to do. I, <laughs> you got I, things hard. Yeah, I could I could have called the transfer people. It was um, it was for skiing and it was going to drop me off in the little town where we were. So I'm sure they would have been able to schedule it later. But it was going through a French town called Chamonix, which is about yeah, an hour. Yeah, it was about an hour's drive away from where we were actually going. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to get there at like noon and then I'll have the whole day to try and get... Then you walked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have, but no, I was exhausted as well. Like 10 hours on a on a coach wasn't fun, but I thought I'm going to get off at Chamonix and then I've got a few hours till the next transfer to work it out. So I actually got three trains and a bus and then a little taxi all between like lots of little different towns there. And it was, I got there two or three hours earlier than I was meant to. And it was beautiful, like getting little steam trains through the french alps and stuff it was absolutely beautiful so even though i was exhausted it ended up costing a bit more money and stuff and i felt silly but actually it ended up being better so hashtag lost in europe <laughs> yeah i actually i loved it like i was just going to the train station and trying to speak some french and you know oh you, you oh, speak some french no pardon <laughs> <laughs> pardon vous say, no uh parlez vous anglais is about as far as i go <laughs> but um no, it was actually really nice. And so I just got there, got to the house at like, you know, early afternoon and I got to chill and stuff. So yeah, then skiing was good. It's Kai probably had like similar conditions. It was a bit cloudy and rainy and snowy, but I don't know, me and my family is very much, I'd kind of get on with it and whatever. So the mountains, there wasn't that many people on the ski slopes during the, the harder days and it was just ended up being better. So yeah, great time out there. You know, I feel like I'm almost due for, for some mistake now. After Kai, like, forgot to book one of his first season flights, and now you booked your, your basically epic journey for, for the wrong day. Oh, it I feel was like only I'm a, next. That's it was like only a, a 25 euro bus. That's yeah, funny. but it's like a. Wait, you can. American listeners, are you listening to this? You can ride a bus from Bologna all the way to Geneva for 20 fucking euros? Well, it was 100 euros right then and there, but the pre booked one was cheap, yeah. All yeah. The... <laughs> okay, that's crazy. Like I, I, I know that buses are cheap in Europe, but yeah. yeah. No, no, it was, it was. There was even less ones. The one I took would just fit the times. There was one that was like fourteen euros or something for a ten or eleven hour bus journey. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, very cheap. Anyway, that, that's me. Very busy month. Glad to be back. Um, felt like I can kind of relax a little bit more and get back to. Being Dude, a nerd. it's the same for me. It's, yeah. it's very much the same for me. I still haven't fully internalized that after the. I want to say like almost the three busiest months of my life i'm i'm back home now and like i get to chill like you, you you know you have to shake off that feeling of oh what's happening next week and what's happening next week and no i can like i can decide what i'm gonna do and and that's amazing that's amazing and also i i want to give big shout outs to everybody who played in the high five uh, by the way Kai, is it still called high five legacy no, nah, like that. That was like a that was like a tournament series we wanted to do. With basically, like the, the the theme of like five. So like five proxies allowed. I think the entry was also like I don't know fifteen or something, and the prizes for the top five. But it was it was kind of it was kind of it was, it was kind of odd. A little bullshit. Yeah, dude, it was it was kind of odd, and I think we, we kind of abandoned the um that name. The entry is five hundred and fifty five euros. Yeah, oh goodness, it's just like you, you literally uh, there's like 55 people and then like another person wants to try and Kai's like sorry we need no, like no, another dude, no, 104 not people it. for you to not get in it. 404 or something it's a yeah, house dude. rules 55 card decks yeah, yeah. Dude, like this is the tournament with the bad ideas yeah it's like... amazing so what's it actually called is it just like uh, Berlin Legacy oh, or something yeah so we um so we have the, the um the weekly events on Thursday with like 10 euros entry and like you know like regular four or five wait you, you made me play 20 euros uh well because yeah because that was the, the yeah that, you, dude, non you got, dude, yeah you got scammed because you're like because you were, you came from you know the, the south i'm way too far yeah, yeah. If, if, you're, if you're like south of the noob like you pay extra or something heck yeah dude okay <laughs> but you know i got my sweet i got my sweet revenge because i actually won the tournament heck yeah dude and you won your like 19 euros back no, no, I got, I got like a 45 euro voucher for, for card Ooh. market right before card market stopped, stopped offering vouchers now because apparently there's like a lot of fraud going on there or something. No, At least that's what we suspect. Yeah. But yeah, like but, I want to say that was one of the best local tournaments I ever played. That was so amazing. Like everybody was so nice and also the place was amazing. Oh, dude. <laughs> Like that, so that place, the, the Bretchbeel plot, it's like a, a board game cafe. So um, there are a lot of people who, you know, just, just um, 
Hang out, right? Hey, hey, just hang out and play like all sorts of like board games, such as like uh, Settlers of Catan or any, any, really anything. I think. I want to um, say they had like a, over a hundred different board games easily. Oh, dude, yeah, like for rent and for <laughs> sale. They have like a, and they also have a this nice um, cafe in the in the center of the of the store where you can get waffles if you want to, or oh, dude, cappuccino, or you know anything. You know, um, after I won like my second round, my opponent actually recommended that I get the waffles. And like when the locals s recommends that you get the waffles, you get the waffles. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, I want to I wanna have more. Like that's one of the main reasons I want to come back. I, wanna, I want to have more of those waffles. But seriously, I just like, I love that they had like drinks all around. You literally would just grab the drink and like nobody cared. And then in the end, you just told them, okay, I had this many drinks. I had this and that and that's all fine. Like you, you literally, it, it felt like you were playing at home, right? If you're playing like at friend's place, you just like, you oh, drink yeah. whatever you want, and then in the end you... Well, I guess at the friend's place you don't pay, but... <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> or, or do you guys? I don't know yeah. how it works. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it, it, it kind of uh, fits well to, to into the overall like theme of the of the store, because it, it's a, lot, a, lot of, it's, a lot of things are based on trust, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, like also like the board games. And sometimes you have people who also like casually draft or play Commander and, you know, and uh, also get make new friends sometimes. Or enemies. Or enemies, <laughs> like back in back in uh, like eight years ago, um, when I, before I left Berlin to go to Japan, I that store was not even there. Like we we had a a worse location back then. And yeah, hot box, I, right? Oh, dude, yeah, that place. Hot it, box. It's, Looking back, it was so shit, man. Dude, it, <laughs> like I think we like some of the matches I played like in the storage room or something. That's what I remember. Oh yeah, dude, absolutely. And like I. I was wondering, like, where, like, where are the priorities, right? Because, like, sometimes, like, people um, prefer shittier places if the price, uh, if the prices are better, or vice versa. And turn out, we made like a, a big poll, and turn out that most people prefer a nice location with, like, you know, big tables and maybe like drinks and, and food and all that. And um, you know, the price pool and everything else can is like kind of like tier two, basically, on the priority list. Yeah, which is pretty uh, nice. Amazing. Also, something I noticed, like, dude, so many people are playing Painter there. I want to say like Painter was the shared most played deck at that weekend, and it also it made a lot of sense then because when when I was waiting there uh, for everybody to arrive, like there were so many people coming over asking questions about Painter, and I even saw a lot of people just like randomly sneaking like Emra Kun and Gaia's blessings into their deck. I was like, oh, so this is this no, the serious anti Painter so place here. Yeah. <laughs> insane. I think like that day um, there were more mountains than islands. Easily, Ooh. easily. Oh, there yeah. were also like a lot of Dragon Stompy, and I think somebody played Burn or something. Oh, dude, somebody played yeah. Shatter. I love that. Somebody played, I want to say like this Dragon Stompy, and they had like three copies or something of Shatter no, in the, their deck. It, it, was not, it was not Shatter. It was the, the three mana one that destroyed oh, Pillage. Or, uh, pillage, yeah, dude. Land or. <laughs> it was so cool, dude. Like you Blood Moon, and then you, you, you destroy the, the, uh, the other basics. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's a plan, at least. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like, that's like what people do in old school, dude. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's how it felt like but at least i saw the game also win a couple of matches so that that's something and highlight of the of the weekend of course playing against kai in the i want to say like third round or something when we were both still undefeated there was some oh, yeah. some serious oh, yeah. mind games going on with your doomsday pile and yeah, you avenged me i first of all i think a lot um most listeners might not know but uh julian i have only played twice i think yeah. Like, li like lifetime matches that the first match we had was indeed at the hot box uh about like eight nine years ago and uh that was like elves versus storm if i believe uh, uh, it was actually um was it delver um uh, canadian threshold oh was it yeah and i also you, you remember how that match ended no dude i know I, dude, that's like nine years ago i i still remember because in oh. the third game at some point i realized that i had presented a deck that was like i want to say 12 card short because it had dropped to the floor somehow and i didn't notice and then like halfway through the third game i just realized oh my god what, what what's going on with all these cards on the floor and i'm like okay whatever concede <laughs> <laughs> like the most anticlimactic thing you could imagine <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh. yeah but, but back then i also played against jpa 93 which like the guy's a juggernaut now back then he was like a tiny i don't know how <laughs> tiny he was i don't actually remember it, but he was like a little yeah. child and he was, he was playing yeah we were all kids yeah. like, he was playing the most horrible buck loam control deck i've <laughs> ever seen and I was even like, I kept saying, oh, the most awesome card from the top, from the top, another awesome card. As I ripped like Lano Elves and stuff. And he was like, oh, no, no more, no more. And like, it's so funny when you see his transformation too. Like, he's not the villain of Legacy, but he's he's one of the end bosses of Online Legacy, at least. And yeah, oh, that's yeah, that's yeah. his origin story. He but will yeah, turn one show and tell you with Triple Force will back up like no one else. <laughs> <laughs> with all and the peace and love. Nothing. 
one, two, th- that's like six, that's nine cars. <laughs> if you yep. want to put in something, ten, <laughs> awesome. Yep, no, he still puts in Omni Emrakul and Grizzlebrand. He's the only one who can oh, do yeah. that, actually. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this, no, by the way, this is not a slight against him. It's he is, He's that good. Like, yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> insane. Like, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like in the top three lifetime win percentage in Legacy and Magic Online or something, or top five. Probably. At least. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, Malimuchu is back, by the way. This is this feels like a blast from the past. If you've been in the leagues again, Malimuchu, who, if you don't know, he's from... Ah, uh, is it Croatia? I think it's yeah. Croatia. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's back grinding the leagues. Last time we've seen him was around 2009-ish. Yeah, I saw uh, one of the decks he played today. He's playing Ant with Minsk Boo in the sideboard. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Fucking mental. Because that's how you play Magic these days, right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I was, I was thinking I was going to say like Dark Ritual Minsk and Boo, but that doesn't even work. Yeah, I mean, you lose pedals. Mana Morph Force. Yeah, dude, I was just going to say <laughs> yeah. Mana Morph Force, dude. I was going to say it, but then I didn't because it sounds stupid. Oh, I'm glad we got stupid. you two to pick up the. That's what we're all about pieces. here. I mean, that's how it starts out. Like, Turn one, one Dark tro- Ritual cast my Mana Morph Force. Wait, what? I, you know, I, it's crazy how often we mention the card Mana Morphos, and like I have not seen Mana Morphos in a decade in, the, in any Legacy deck. It's absolutely terrible in Legacy. I played it in some <laughs> brews at like a local like years ago with Baral and stuff like that. It's so bad. It's not a free card. You have to like invest the two mana and then be like, yeah, I'm gonna cast something after it. It's but really like bad. yeah, but like Mana Morphos <laughs> is like the number one card people mention to to make bad cards like yeah, yeah. not so bad. <laughs> like, well, the, after the huh, huh, turn one like manless dredge in the draw, after that the the thing that everyone always says is like spirit guy, spirit guy, mana morph face stifle you on the draw. Right, yeah. That's and the then one mana goes to waste. That's so bad. <laughs> and well, you got another again. stifle for their other uh, thing. Ah, okay, for okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, isn't isn't mana morph not even played in the the epic gamble anymore? I saw it there every once no, in a while. No, no. Oh, oh, it's not even good enough for the epic gamble. Come no. on, man. Not Have even you read close. that card? That card is just like hot garbage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, guys, <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of hot garbage, but actually our Four Seasons was like pretty good, right? <laughs> but the... Oh, four Seasons was... You know, I, I will say like just as a... I think we're all going to say we can't speak highly enough of it, but this one even like went above my expectations because for, for our first one was the one where there was ELM. There was tons of people from all over Europe. It was this big central thing with, you know, the coverage of the ELM, so much hype around it. And a little part of me was like, I hope it like, you know, is is still a great event without that kind of scene. And boy, did it deliver. Like there was like a hundred less people in the main legacy event, but there was still like 300 and something. It was, it was huge. 380 or something. 380, it was still huge. Actually, it's not even that much less, is it? Um, It's a hundred less something. A hundred less, okay, yeah. But like, yeah, geez, it lived up to every expectation. It was, you know, bustling, so many friends there. I just love being in Italy and being with Italians. They just have a way yeah. of making you feel at home. And they're it's so whole lifestyle, friendly. right? Yeah. It's so... There's something about it. Also, I, I love going to Spain, Italy. That That's just mm-hmm. really something about it that, that draws me to it. And yeah. I mean, that's easy to say, right? When you're basically there for a holiday and you eat out every day and everything. It's, it's... <laughs> God, I will say after our four-day weekend there, when I was in France, I had one alcoholic drink the whole time. Usually, you know, after skiing, you go to the pub, you have drinks and stuff. All my family was drinking. And I was like, I'm just exhausted from eating and drinking out and stuff. I uh, had to take it slow. Because we went out quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was the art, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So before we go into, into everything that happened there, a quick listener question from Salvatore Orico. Was there a lot of vendors there? When I was in Bologna last year, I visited a few shops. Well, what would you guys say? I think there was, there was like tons, a decent amount. Tons. Yeah, like, there was like 10 at least. Something like that, right? More, I think. There was, yeah, like four each side. Then a big one, which is the Bose. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There was also some weirdo doing his like tokens and stuff there was oh dude that guy like yeah. right next to registration right <laughs> yeah like he wasn't even sitting there he just no. like put up a box and he, he so asked lazy. for like, basically charity yeah. and then he yeah. could take some of his, his tokens <laughs> i wouldn't and, even count that as a boot dude that was like a, that was yeah. a scam <laughs> yeah that's generous right <laughs> but <laughs> dude, the the question, tokens, yeah, was like, like yeah like insect or something like who uses that yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> Only with people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, was, it was really successful for UK, right? I, I it, saw you like after, like, you, you sold a lot of those tokens. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, uh, so. Uh, to, like, to be clear, it, the weirdo we're talking about is Kai. He was selling <laughs> tokens. Yeah, the guy who doesn't, still doesn't ship to Germany, by the way. 
Oh, dude, I, I, at this point, like people are actually asking me about this shit because they wanted to dude. buy more from you, and it's like it's getting I know, dude, it's becoming like, a meme in Germany at this okay, point. Dude, sp spoiler alert, though. Also, for everyone who doesn't know, um, I'm I I have this like non-compete clause and some kind of contract. <laughs> this mind-blowing idea of not shipping to Germany, even though I'm located in Germany. Yeah, dude, at this point, it's just a meme that... <laughs> and, like, the, the, thing, the thing is, like, at, at first I thought, this is, like, a bad idea. I'm just gonna, like, do it. And now I'm, like, this is almost my brand right now. And, like, I, I cannot stop it. And, uh, you it know, doesn't I make any sense to me. I know, I know. <laughs> and, it's, dude, the, thing, the, the most ridiculous thing is, like, I still keep getting those messages from people, like, you know, they, they are kind of offended sometimes. They're, like, did you block me or something? So, dude, dude, no, I just, I just don't ship to Germany. You, you, you know, you should, you, like, you should change your account on card market, not shipping to Germany. <laughs> or something like i don't know like this is it's the weirdest thing and it, it's I'm, I'm trying to make sense of it but i, I still yeah. can't make any sense of it. like i was no. even wondering like is it like tax purposes that you oh i don't dude, know no. i don't even, i don't even know how that works yeah i just i just wanted to i, I don't pay taxes no problem <laughs> <laughs> no taxes no problem <laughs> anyway um uh, yeah so uh i got i um i talked to the organizer um andrea gabellini um pretty cool guy like you, you know he used to be a legacy player i believe like that's at least like what i heard from the other guys like he, he used to play it um quite a lot but he started being like a local event organizer in like smaller parts in italy i think for like 20 30 60 people on mm -hmm. average and then they kind of you know and then he re revamped the um the whole like system and um you know and now he's doing like the, the four seasons events right so is, is he and like the big mastermind of, of four seasons i thought I like nicolo was involved heavily in that as well well nicolo is, is, the, uh, is, is, is dude he's the coverage guy right but i think andrea is the the mastermind behind all all that i might be mistaken maybe but that's um, my understanding I, as well i think yeah i think four seasons also started a lot smaller obviously but like i don't know if they even thought it would grow into what it is now and so now it's so much work to carry on going. You probably just, it is what it is. And yeah, he probably started it as maybe even something similar to like, you know, he just wanted more events as well to play, but. You know, I wonder whether because it grew so big and they became, it involves so much more work to organize the entire thing. I wonder whether that's why they're basically off by a season, right? Because we're playing autumn in December and we're playing winter in, <laughs> <Yeah>. in March. <laughs> yeah. And I guess we're going to play spring in June now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. just the Italian seasons are weird. I mean, yeah. technically, I know that you can like count seasons by month or by some calendar date, and then it makes sense again. But I mean, who does that? Italians, <laughs> dude, they're uh, gonna figure it out. It's it's Italy. They're yeah. gonna figure it out. Awesome. I just trust the process. Just trust them. They got their shit figured out. Awesome. Exactly. So yeah, we were we were talking about like color, uh, colors. Yeah, oh, dude, I want to see color alterations by the way one day. <laughs> we, we were talking about Kai's dude. booth at at Four Seasons and exactly. how that came about. Yeah, so um, so Andrea and I like we've been texting, you know, for for quite some time, and and he offered me that a, a small tiny booth to try it out. Um, I already told him, hey, I'm not gonna be at the booth 24 seven because I I want to join up a couple of those events, but maybe there's like a a tiny little table somewhere, maybe like next to the restroom, maybe uh, where I can display <laughs> my whole, <laughs> some some stuff, right? You should sell, that, sell them in the restroom, like you know the people trying to sell you perfume. It's just Kai there after you take a piss trying to sell you tokens. Hey, you want, want an insect token to go with your with your soap or something? <laughs> Dude. Sorry, I should stop shit talking so much. No, 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 it's no, no. Cool. It's, it's good. So, but, like, I was, I was really expecting s the, the shittiest table to the... Yeah. To, I, I mean, mean that's to, what you got, right? <laughs> right. And, and, then, and, then, and then, like, I showed up and that was, like, again, like, the most Italian thing because I didn't expect expect anything but Andrea also didn't specifically um tell me like we're like where that place gonna be how big the table is blah 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 I didn't get any any details so I went there and then he he um he approaches me and he's like okay well um you got this table it is literally next to the main event registration and I'm like what the hell I mean and that was pretty good when you think about it like, that was like, insane dude that was just like that was not what I expected I was like so much better right and uh yeah so I ended up Placing my uh, my binder with the uh, with my brand new tokens, um, a little bit like a, like a money box where people can like throw in the money, and um, it kind of made it like a, a self service booth because I was busy playing Magic, so um, like on in the binder it already said you know please self service uh, just take them out and uh, you know drop a few coins in that box and 
That's you good. know what you should do in the future? You, sh you should have a thing that people can scan and then PayPal you if they don't have like cash on them. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, welcome to the future. I mean, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's yeah, in, in Germany, like we we still do do cash everywhere. Right. I mean, you're used to that, right? right? Like that was that was quite successful, even though I didn't spend a lot of time there. But I already, but it it kind of triggered something, and um, now I'm I'm eager to um to make something bigger. To expand out of this. on that, right? Yeah, I yeah I haven't I haven't talked to anyone just yet. But my my main the main idea idea is that I uh, have a bigger booth where I still sell all those tokens uh, or sign them or whatever whatever people want but i'm also there maybe like one of the three days and uh do a direct challenge booth where people can directly challenge me in modern le uh, le modern legacy or vintage and i'm gonna t think about the outcome but i want to make a token that also says like you know i beat somewhat or something some that's so like amazing that. we talked about that right like like yeah, some dude. kind of like zombie token that has like you i was gonna say hanging on a cross or <laughs> i mean something <laughs> I, I, e even i'm gonna do, do this even i'm gonna challenge do you it. this is great oh, heck yeah heck dude, yeah. i'd love to do that like people are gonna right. show up with like the most pre sideboard text <laughs> <laughs> dude like for like dude for hush bring a main dude no problem <laughs> like no this is what i play at home oh sure yeah, yeah, yeah i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> no, but seriously, like I would love to do that. I, I talked to you about that as well, right? And in, in uh, Italy, if if you did something where you do alterations on the spot, uh, I'd be down. I don't know how long it takes you to do one of those cards if it's, if it's actually feasible or if you need like some uh, I don't know, know inspiration or something. Usually, yeah, usually it's, it's about like thirty minutes, maybe sometimes a little longer. Oh, that um, fast? Ca ca it kind of depends on the on the on the subject though, and like, like, like know, for example, the, the the construct token that you made for me. Yeah, that, that was, was amazing, about, by the way. I think that I was about like forty minutes. I think. 40 minutes S some, uh, something so like that that's actually doable right yeah i could do that i i gotta like i gotta like figure out what exactly i want to do at the booth but i think it, it's gonna be like a combination of like selling selling stuff you know selling tokens alterations all that and that but also playing magic at the booth i think that's pretty mm -hmm. that's pretty insane because um most artists don't play magic like uh, the majority of magic artists like the um official ones like he they <laughs> they like maybe they play commander but that that's about it i just happen to be a legacy player <laughs> <laughs> i like that, that, that short hesitation of before calling yourself player <laughs> as, yeah. as opposed to me i'm a legacy enjoyer enjoy that yeah, yeah. That, that's it that was the, the word that was legacy like, enthusiast yeah. Yeah. So um, again, you know, it has nothing has been decided yet, but this is definitely something I want to do in the future. And um, I like, think that's awesome. So yeah, listen up, everyone. Next next four seasons, you can challenge Kai. Dude, and... bring your Hushbringer decks. Yeah, <laughs> I think you can say like, please be fair game. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. dude, dude, no, no. I think uh, part of the dude, fun of uh, it is dude, that you get to slaughter Kai. Oh, dude, like if I, guess I so. I'm gonna I'm gonna have my four main deck massacre deck ready, like whatever. <laughs> You're gonna whatever, go next level like, on that shit. Dude, it's gonna be like massacre Nick fit or something. I don't. You care. could also just have like three decks ready, and then you like you pick one how you're feeling. So it's just hard to. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So well, if my first deck is Doomsday, what other decks should I? Uh, I mean, like, you're the breakfast guy. Right? Oracle Shift, Do Doomsday, and Burn. Breakfast. <laughs> I seriously have, have some troll deck as the, as, as the well, final one. Well, you should probably not play two Thassa's Oracle decks. That was three. Go... That, that, that was the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast, Oracle Shift, and Doomsday. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Oh, How that's did you amazing. have that in Oracles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, we, we have also so many more recommendations about Bologna, right? Kai, you, you went to the, what's it called? Bologna Nerd Club. You even became like a... Yeah, dude. A, did you Heck become yeah, a dude. lifetime member or like an annual member or something? Yeah, so... um. Right, that was on Sunday. So, um, spoiler alert, I scrubbed out of the, the Legacy main event. I think I, think I went Didn't like you do that last time as well. Yeah, dude, I'm pretty good at dropping from main events. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I went like one three drop, and um, my buddy Sean from the States, he, he was there, and um, he's has been obsessed with pinball for almost like six or seven months, I think. And <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna six or seven. Months. Months. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh God, six or seven decades now. No, years now. Month. No, month. <laughs> and, and, and a few I've, days. <laughs> I've been really into pinball for the last six hours. But no, dude, Sean's amazing. Like, yeah, dude. And like, so um, so he told me about this uh retro game uh, club store. Uh, uh, g garage. garage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Underground garage, garage. Probably. <laughs> Uh, and the other side of the um, of the city, like um, closer to the airport, and we went there, and it was and uh, it was insane how like how packed it was with um, 
games from like you know like the the 80s the 70s and even before that if you even saw a pinball machine from like 1933 like that's pre-war stuff but you're not allowed to play with that right yeah i right exactly i also don't think i want to play with that because it, 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 <laughs> you're it didn't have any it. those of those, those like flashy lights and anything you know it was yeah kind of like, yeah but that's amazing. Like, I really wanted to go. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do badly enough in the main event to drop out. But from the pictures you sent me, <laughs> they also had, like, like Super Nintendo games and, like, these old, okay. these old, what do you call them? These old TVs that are, like, as big as a house and something. Oh, and, yeah. dude, I, I I would love to go. Like, next time, maybe I can drop out of the main event or <laughs> something. <laughs> but that's that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Also, I think on, uh, was it on Friday when, <laughs> like, Sean had this, this, like, Sean is really into pinball, by the way. <laughs> really, really, really into pinball. Pinball radar finder map or something. And we... It's called Pinball Map. A great name. Is yeah. it? Is, yeah? A straight yeah. up pinball map? Okay. Yeah. And then he, he was like, okay, there's a pinball place around here. There's a pinball. And then before the tournament, uh, when I think it was actually Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday. Callum was playing in the, in the modern main event, and we were playing in Legacy, which only started later. And... Yeah, we, we just, like, follow this pinball app, and I'm expecting the biggest pinball dungeon or something. But yeah, it turns out it was actually like a kindergarten with like an elderly daycare thing, like right next to it. And like, there was like one machine. <laughs> and like the, 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 you were either something like, I want to say like a kindergarten age or you were like 80. And then we walked in there and like Sean destroyed that machine, right? It was the Doc, uh, yeah. James Bond Dr. No machine or something. The, yeah, the, like he killed it. He, I think he played them, um, he played as long as it took him to, um, to finish like first. I think like he's like now the record holder for, for that machine specifically and will be because like years. i think i think for for pinball like every machine also um tells you like the um the high score um player yeah, it's even like I internationally initials, connected maybe? right you, you could like connect to to your online database and tie it to your account and get like like pinball is bigger than i ever thought and it's like apparently like really serious and, and it's even really big in germany from what sean told us so yeah this this i'm actually wondering whether there's a pinball podcast <laughs> we'll find it i'm sure there is yeah oh yeah but yeah, uh, let's let's get back into into a legacy now, right, guys? We tried to redeem ourselves from the last time when we played in the team tournament in in December. I think last time we went something like did we go three three and one three two one, which is three, two, what one. we joked about on the podcast that we would do, yeah. right? Oh, uh, going, yeah. I mentioned that. We, I all I want is a positive record. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean that's what that? I wanted. Yeah, yeah, we we did slightly better this time. We made top eight. There were how many teams are there? Like sixty five or something? Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds roughly uh, about right. And this time we switched it around. We had Callum on Vintage playing, was it Squeevine? Squeevine, yeah. Yeah, we had Kai on uh, Blue Red Merc Tide and Modern, and I got to perform in Legacy with Black Red Painter, one of the very first tournaments that I actually got to play with like Chaos Defiler. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. me and Kai had like the perfect event. We both did pretty average to bad, <laughs> and we had Julian just constantly win everything, and then we like split our losses perfectly just to keep winning. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I think we had a, we had a lot of two two ones. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Julian went. Julian, you lost once. I, I lost once against Matt Brown on, uh, on initiative. Initiative, but that was yeah. banned, so it doesn't count. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So otherwise, you went like five one, including that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and me I and Kai we were went like. To... Uh... <laughs> I think you went like two and three, and and one of your matches was like aborted because we we had already won or something. Uh, yeah, you, maybe you did also like okayish, right? And and modern, oh. like it was kind of funny to watch you play. Did you go four two, maybe? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, fine. I didn't have any peak performances, uh, but I think um, I don't know. I think in in our team, the le the legacy player has to be the backbone. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's like so much like heavy lifting the legacy player has to do because like with like vintage and dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, like, I literally started in like I've, I didn't know how to sideboard in modern like sometimes i started in i have like a couple of engineer explosives and sometimes i started in like one and then i quickly started it out you it's, know it's, it's, for, the, it's for the grindy <laughs> matchups in game three my, my favorite part was when i looked over to you and like on, on like the second turn you you bolted in a boreal grazer so you could attack with your dragon rage channel uh. for one i was like <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> you, you had some really cool games though like I, I remember watching the one against the elementals deck and you played that really well that, that was crazy yeah. though so it was uh blue red merc tide versus a four color elementals deck with time oh, dude, that was masterful that, that yeah. was like the, the, the final game we had to that, win right yeah dude, and that game like the game one took about 30 minutes but that was like peak magic to me because it kind of reminded me of like also like old games in legacy where let's, let's say like shotless buck versus i don't know like 
oh, what's a good example like Esper Stoneblade or some something mm-hmm. like yeah, that yeah, where yeah. like there's like a lot of back and forth and, and like, throughout a, the a game really there big, were like resource battle right oh dude like there were like two points in the game where I was almost about to concede and then I I just I just kept ripping more iterations and ledger shredder did a lot of filtering and all the considers felt like ponders. There, and... there was a point I looked over and like your opponent had tons of lands, they had a Ren and Six on like five or six, they had Teferi, they had like one or two of the Risen Reefs, they had like five or six cards in hand. And you were like stuck on three or four lands and you kept like finding uh the spy bluff canal at the fourth land and stuff things looked <laughs> awkward and honestly you played it incredibly well and i was watching along and just like not saying anything because i knew i'd mess it up so yeah well yeah. but your opponent also later told you right he, he was trying to bait you on your last counter spell for like a couple of spells and you held on to it he was like you were like oh i, I think i can like push through this i don't need my counter spell here and then in the end you you really hit the the nail on the head mm-hmm. um, Dude, but the, the, this, but this is like this is like peak magic to me where yeah, you much. have let's let's say you have a you have a removal spell or a counter and then opponent plays something that is pretty threatening but it doesn't kill you so uh so you kind of like well i you know, as much as I want to counterspell that spell, I think I'm going to hold it just in case if my opponent has something that's even worse. And turned out that was exactly what happened. And um, I, I really dig those um, game you know, evaluations. I very, very, right? very much agree. And that's also what I really appreciate about a deck because people always talk about, oh, my deck is so cool. It has so many choices. But I think, in especially in Legacy, when, when there's like a lot of choices, very often you're basically railroaded and making certain choices, even though technically there were like two or three others. But if you played the game for like at least a little bit, you you know that they're not really alternatives. Whereas in modern, and maybe that's the part of it is also that I'm not as deep into modern as I'm into legacy. I felt like every decision wasn't like an actual decision and there was like no railroading or something. It's just like you really have to make a call here and it could go either way. And that was, I want to say you had some of the best gameplay of the weekend there. Oh yeah, it was it was it wasn't wasn't bad by any means. I think a lot of players complained when when counterspell became legal in modern because it kind of took away like mana leak and remand and all that sort of stuff. But I gotta say, like counterspell still pretty difficult to play in modern because uh, there's a lot yeah, honestly, a lot it of things miserable going on. most of the time when I was looking over. But in, in the late game, once it became turned on, <laughs> no, but Thank seriously, you. like you, you're like an aggressive deck, right? In the early games, you would tap tap out most of the time. And but when I was watching you play against what's what was it, like Lance, I think it was the very first round when you got like crushed by it. I was like, oh, my oh, God. like Amulet Titan, dude. That was that was <laughs> yeah. not that was not cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stupid Arboreal Grazer. But speaking of, speaking of good gameplay. I mean, you had a cool game and stuff, but I had a game against Tom Dedecker where it was like turn six. We both have one card in hand and we both have a root waller in play. Nothing else. <laughs> that was Dude. such peak vintage to me. Oh it was awesome. Goodness. We had like wastelanded each other like four or five times and like Noxious Revival at back and stuff. And we'd force a vig at each other's hollow ones. We had like done such horrible shit to each other. And then we, well, I, I literally yeah. have a Basking Root Waller and he has a Blazing Root Waller and we both have one card in hand. <laughs> it's like turn seven in the most powerful format <laughs> ever created. <laughs> uh, it was great. I loved it. Well, yeah. So, so that was the that was the bizarre, um, what's it called? Hollow, yeah. hollow wine. Squee deck. vine mirror. Yeah. Squee wine. Yeah. 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 Just... Uh, not going to lie. It looked super miserable. It, it looked amazing when you actually got to completely crush people, right? Mm-hmm. But it, the mirror, I'm I'm not even sure if, if there's any proper tech. I think you told me the the only tech that really exists is like more wastelands and ghost quarters and stuff. And yeah. I guess noxious survival to get, get back Basar and stuff. Exactly. Um, The mirror, like I've I'd played two matches with the deck before the event. And Tom plays it quite a lot, so he knew what he was talking about. And in the taxi home the night before, we were talking about the deck and like what you do in the mirror. And the deck is, it has a lot of interesting things going on. So like the color of your cards are your mana base. So in the mirror, you cut loads of your blue cards because they are your blue lands. So the more blue cards you cut, the less pitch cards you have. And so you keep green cards in because they are your pitch to force a vigor, for example. It, it so it was a weird thing for me to like you have to process your head around like every single spell in the deck is free so you you're bringing back venge vines hollow ones the the root wellers and so the texture of your of the colors of cards in your deck have to match what you're trying to cast and stuff rather than actually forces, having a right? force yeah, of yeah. And shit. fury yeah. force of vigor force of will force of negation stuff it, it, it's kind of funny <laughs> when you say everything in your deck is free because i i think we even talked about it right before the tournament right that the, the one card in main deck that really hurts you is, what's it called, Lavinia? Lavinia, uh, yeah. Lavinia, yeah. yeah. I, I, I keep confusing it with Lenvala, but yeah, Lavinia. And you you literally, like in the entire 75, you have one out to it, which 
is a Caracas. Caracas, that's it. <laughs> well, so I should have played two or three Caracas in hindsight, and I lost to Livinier a couple of times, but I also beat it like in a friendly game against Hands, where I had like a guy's cradle and was pumping up a Basking Root Waller and stuff. You could, you can. It is two mana, and you do have Force of Wills, so sometimes you just get on the board too fast. But yeah, you should have some more answers to it. Oh, by the way, in speaking of Hans uh, uh, HJ Kaiser, but when we played them, holy shit, that was like one of the the. the well, I guess it sounds weird when I say Clash of the Titans because like we're not <laughs> Titans, but I, I think <laughs> we, have, we have some accolades. Who who was on Heinz's team again? It was, it was Joe Brennan on Vintage. He <laughs> yeah. He massacred me. Like I did have a multi three game one, and then he had a turn one Lavinia. It's like a, at least one time Eternal Weekend for now, right? Yeah, he's he's got tons of accolades. He is also just like he's one of these players that has a deep understanding and knowledge of Vintage, especially, and he'll just play perfectly. So it's very hard to play against him. And we had Hans on on Modern, who has like two legacy Eternal Weekend top eights, and then a bunch more of like mm-hmm. big European he stuff. He came second at Vintage Eternal Weekend in America recently as well. Dude, this guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he's pretty good. Kai destroyed him though, apparently. Well, I yeah, mean, he yeah, Kai got I, mean, that. I I don't I don't know if Modern is a Hans go to format. He, uh, he played, he's, Bro- he's good enough to play everything though. He played Blue Red Browse, and I think he played it like really well from what I've seen. But I mean, yeah, we, we had Kyle it, on Modern, right? He's the Modern well, specialist. <laughs> Dude, I'm the Modern Goat. <laughs> you know, I just took it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take like, that sound bite. I'm gonna I remove th- your laughter. <laughs> so, I'm the Modern Goat. Sure, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> want some lessons. Dude, uh, I'm not the Legacy God, but I'm the Modern Goat. Anyway, um, the only guy I didn't know was on. It was Lee. So Lee, Lee was the Legacy guy. He's Hank the Obese online and stuff. Oh, he's Hank the Obese? Yes. Because yeah. Hank the Obese pr- pr- uh, plays like stuff that's really out there, usually yep. on, on Legacy. So he's kind of popularized Chancellor um, of the Annex in like even modern with Shining mm-hmm. Shoal and stuff. He was playing it in Initiative. He wasn't playing it this weekend now. He's kind of off it for meta reasons. But um, yeah, that was Lee Lee Platt or something. But yeah, he came yeah. over from America, from Texas for it. Yeah, first time in Europe. And yeah. he played Initiative and holy shit that game was insanely close yeah like super it was like super intimidating when you hear opponents talk about what they could do and what they could have and at the <laughs> same time like we are trying to read that and i remember when we were talking about modern kai and i we were like trying to mention the card the german card names but then again hans probably speaks some german mm-hmm. and i was like this is this is like next level some some super spy code shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah your, your match was very close though wasn't it, it came pretty it was insanely close yeah yeah, it was it was all about like you attacked for exactly lethal, but we almost like milled ourselves out to try and hit a Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Oh, Phyrexian Dragon Engine, yeah, that, that would have been like the really sweet play, yeah. but I was scared to do it because it was like too fancy, and but I think the, there, there wasn't like a scenario where it goes super wrong. There was one really interesting bit in game three where we kind of like played Engineer, got Painter, we had a Saga coming off, with, so a Grindstone coming in, and he they played they made one play that was very weird into they played though they plowed a fable main phase wasn't it yeah they plowed the fable token the goblin they, token they plowed the fable main phase while we had an engineer in play so immediately well not immediately but it took us a minute but we were like wait that means they have guys blessing in their deck yeah yeah you, you so, actually alerted me to that because i yeah. wasn't thinking about it at the time but it's, you were it's like, the only thing that makes sense ver- right yeah this very much makes it and then for the rest of the game we literally played around guys blessing we, we yeah. never like committed any unnecessary resources to to making the combo work and i think we we just won by beatdown right yep defiler attacked them a few times yeah yeah dude defiler so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that kind of was so much fun so yeah in the end we we got into the top eight and the way it worked is uh for basically all the four seasons events right the the top eight doesn't get resolved it's it's just like everybody who gets into the top eight gets the same share of the price so it's like basically pre-split yeah and then we got something like 270 euros or something yeah yeah sounds, sounds about right so the last episode, we kind of like bemoaned the whole no top eights playing it out. And it's it's just something you have to get used to. This is how they run their events. And this is quite common in Italy. And especially because the events are finishing later, everyone wants to go and get dinner, have a drink afterwards. So if word of advice for anyone coming over, this is just what they do. And you need to be happy with that. And for playing Legacy, like after nine or 10 rounds on Sunday, <laughs> some people are happy about it as well. So yeah. Um, I mean, the smaller events, for. technically, you could do it, right? If, if but you they played earlier. the top eight of the teams last year, right? Or last yeah, event. But... But... I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So really. I've, I've already made my peace with it. Like, I like playing top eights. I like playing for the win. But if this is their structure, this is their structure. And it's also pretty fun. Like, Yeah, especially in the main event, it makes sense, right? Because it's so big that you will usually, like, play nine or ten rounds. And then it's just, like, it gets way too late. So yeah. the only option is to play on the next day, which 
for many reasons doesn't really work that well uh, yeah. because people want to play other channels. Like SCG used to do it right that you get like buys in the in the main event, the other main event and stuff. But yeah, it's it's, it's not ideal. So I I don't yeah. mind like. Last time we weren't aware of it ahead of time. I mean, none of us got into the top eight, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this time, we were uh, aware of it, so so it's fine. Yeah. Should we um quickly go through the legacy top eight? I've got a picture of the top eight people in front of me. I think I can remember. Um, actually, I'm going to yeah. put the names quickly, just because I thought the top eight was cool. Like, I know we've had some bands now, so it's, you know... Yeah, the decks aren't that interesting for the legacy top eight, but if, if you want to, like, highlight the people, sure, go ahead. Yeah, so the first place is also getting an invite to ELM, so... Uh, playing for like top of Swiss also was quite important. So we had Maro um, Petrozella who came first. He was playing Grixis Delva. I, I didn't see the list. I haven't seen the list at all actually. So I don't know if there's anything different. But he was on the top tables basically all day. So yeah, congrats Maro. He won the ELM spot off Joe Brennan, who we mentioned before, based off a point like point naught naught three of a tiebreaker. So tiny. So Joe Brennan came second on Death Shadow. In third, we have Luca Fazzoli on Doomsday. Luca is Fuzz65 online, bit of a master of Doomsday. In fourth, we have Stefano Vince, Vincentini. He's painter, I'm pretty sure. So he uh, had a really crazy last game against the uh, in the final match. We were kind of watching, got a bit weird, but um, congrats. In fifth, we have Giacomo Battaglia. Pretty sure he's Lands. Yeah. Six, we have Mark. the list here. Oh, nice, cool. I'm going to carry on reading this off. Six, we have Marco Montani. I want to come back to him in a second, who played Death Shadow. Seventh, we have Eric Bond on Blue Red Delva. And eighth, we have Angelo Cadet on Four Color Control. Dude, Angelo. Angelo. <laughs> Didn't go to time. He made top eight. Congrats, Angelo. Dude, dude, seriously. Angelo is like one of the juggernauts of Italian legacy. He he's, he's been around ever since I've been tra traveling to legacy. And he just like, he keeps crushing. He yeah. He's just there walking around, drinking beer, not playing any of the side events. And then he goes <laughs> yeah, like yeah. into the main event. He just like crushes. Easy. Through. And also because of the way the, the tournament works, right? We had pre-split. Usually the people who end like in first and second place are the ones who, who really have to play for it all the way. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people like in like sixth, seventh, eighth place are the ones who go undefeated and then drawn to the top eight. So yeah. that's, I guess that's yes. used it a little bit. So Joe Brennan, like he played. So Tagoras and him could probably have ID'd in. They, they were paired last round. But Joe said he wasn't sure. And so there was a um, the ninth place lost out on on breakers against angelo so mm -hmm. joe thought that that might be him so he played and they had an insane match on camera so um go check out the four seasons twitch uh, they should be up there and the last round i was watching it in the hall i was just watching it on my phone and uh, manguchi comes over <laughs> and starts talking to me like sorry not now i want to watch this game it was <laughs> it was really crazy especially game three was down to the wire i thought it was over and then joe came back but i want to come back to um marco montani who Ordered. he's not lost a match in the last two four seasons four seasons before he went 8-0 then double id into top eight and this one he went 7-0 double id into top eight and he's basically playing the same deck each time right is yeah it's death, shadow. death shadow i have to just highlight though like this is his wheelhouse wheelhouse he's so good with death shadow he plays a ton of decks though like online i saw him playing dnt recently and he even like won a challenge with isamaru and stuff doesn't he stream i don't think he does oh he does not i thought he was uh oh. no uh there, there's a couple of italian streamers yeah um, not true heroes that you think you no not true no. I, I know what true who true okay. there's another one M mm17 or something well this is he is mm17 but he doesn't stream. yeah but doesn't he stream i thought he streams i'm pretty, I'm pretty sure of seaman streaming mm, I don't think or maybe so. maybe he was like a guest on on uh true hero stream and i saw that he, he's got like a like a beard right uh, i mean like i don't know one, one third of all men or something not, re <laughs> not, not the best qualifier. not really but really? um i'll point him out afterwards Either, either way, he, after the event, he posted like some thoughts on Death Shadow and stuff afterwards. And he's so cognizant of what all these changes do to the deck and stuff. So he really geared his deck to beat Initiative and he can be good against Delva. He didn't play Merktide Regent. He didn't play Merktide Regent because everyone was playing Snuff Out in Delva. And he thought Death Shadow might be popular as well. So he was playing actual Gurma Gangler over Merktide as a meta call for this meta game. So it's what just stuff like that. It's just stuff what like that genius. that wins wins events. He's he's so on the ball with like deck building yeah. and type play. So I, I think what's horrifying to me is that like I mean obviously Marco is an incredible player. But that new legacy ban uh, we're gonna talk about probably in a second, like expressive iteration and Viper Adventure, like those cards have not are not in key cards in death shadow like that deck is just completely untouched 
And um, that, to me, especially as a combo player, is free, freaking horrifying. I think because... Death Shadow gets worse, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's that? Because that's not how it gets played less. Uh, control comes back as well, and it, you're pretty good against Delver, like the Lightning Bolt based deck. So Delver gets a bit worse, Control comes back, there's more source of power shares and stuff. Okay, so, yeah, okay, well, maybe maybe the meta game's gonna like change yeah. a bit, but like, what, what, is I, probably what I meant is that game, the deck, yeah. right, what I meant yeah. is that the deck has not, like, probably doesn't need to change. Maybe it needs to change a little bit, mm -hmm. but, you know, it just didn't get nerfed by any, by any means. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. I think I do agree. The deck is it's probably underplayed, honestly. It's just like if you can have this kind of level of tuning the deck because he was also one of the first people that i was aware of that like started playing baleful strix which is now pretty stock in it like strix is a pretty mopey card it's not really what you want in your delver oh, yeah. deck but he added strixes for the last four seasons because he expects lots of initiative initiative was still kind of newer then remember like mm. e elm it had the kind of breakout weekend where it won but everyone was expecting it as well to be honest Right. It's also like it's it was like one of the very few decks where it's okay if you fuck up with your deck list and submit more shock lands and <laughs> dual lands. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's yeah, the yeah. actual like one deck that's like. Well, maybe he fucks up okay. and submits like four underground seas, one water grave. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that is literally my doomsday mana base right there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that works slightly better for doomsday uh, for 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 that's Shadow and that's for doomsday. But yeah, um, <laughs> let me let me reiterate. It's. It's actually insane that level of deck building and thought of of literally cutting Murktide, which ha is like in the top, I want to say like five creatures in, in Legacy right now. Mm -hmm. and, and he's just like, you know what? Everybody's playing snuff out to to combat like initiative and everything. I'm literally gonna not play that. I'm gonna go back to good old zombie fish and just like try to beat down people with like a random five five on the ground. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. Also, awesome. I mean, by the way, I just found who he is. Yeah, he's he's not who I thought he was. Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Worth noting that Joe Brennan in second did play Murktide Regent. So they so Joe Brennan was playing the version that has four grief and how many four reanimate. Wait, he's got four grief? Yeah. So this was another thing that like Oh, because of reanimate. Oh yeah, you yeah. just mentioned that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Four reanimates, four griefs. So okay, that's that's pretty sick. <laughs> it's pretty it's a pretty powerful play. So this has been like picking up in popularity online. I think it did also come from the Italians somewhat. Um I don't want to say names, I'm not exactly sure where to oh, just say it. names. You, we are wrong all the time. Well, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it was uh Andrea Mangucci, like uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> How many Italians do you know? Actually you know a lot of Italians. <laughs> yeah. But then like, the I'm list... always impressed, like when you go to these tournaments, like both of you guys, you know so many Italian guys. I, I know like five. You <laughs> you you know like half of northern Italy. There's so many of them that you have to they're yeah, all I guess so, there's a couple. They're all so fun and nice and lovely, so yeah no but seriously that turn one like grief and then reanimate grief that's basically like uh like a two for two because you still get to keep the grief you spend the three end. cards they lose two yeah but you also get the creature so it comes down to, to a two for two it's a, yeah three two man is just no joke yeah please. yeah yeah it's also just like board presence when you want that against initiative is the thing right yeah how big is grief i'm running like three two, three, two something? Menace. yeah dude yeah. Three two menace. That's, that's like serious, and you, you yeah. lose I, a lot I, of life. I always like. I always remember um, grief as like a delve of secrets, basically in black. <laughs> like, like you, you, can't, you can't, like you can't really block it, and it has like, it has like pseudo vis um, uh, evasion, and like it get it steals the initiative like every single time. Dude, if you do, it's... if you pull that off on the play, like that's completely gonna tear your most decks apart. Yeah. Like, try to like if you do that in the first turn against initiative. And you either take out their payoff or you take out their acceleration or something. They literally might not be able to play the game for the next couple of turns while you just like tear, like yeah, them. double you thought them long, you just like smash them. No joke. Like, like yeah, I yeah. think Joe Brennan's one especially is just nightmare fuel for combo, right? <laughs> that like, guy's just sitting there. Oh four thought sees, four grief with reanimates, yeah. and then like four days and four force of will as well. Four wasteland. Like yeah, dude. Oh. I'm, I'm, dude, I, I, I'm happy I won three drop that tournament uh, so, yeah. so I didn't have to play him yeah. yeah so guys do you think like Snuffout is gonna stick around now that initiative is gone again like do you think like Trixus Deva still stays a thing because well I, I guess I'm already implying it I don't think potentially, so potentially I think it was perfectly situated in the meta game but it depends just where the format goes now so it's, I don't think this deck is anywhere near as good as White Initiative, but there is this like red green deck popping up, and uh, I've, I've played it a couple of times online. And Snuff Out is a complete blowout because your creatures cost four mana, and you mm -hmm. often lose the initiative. So if that deck is very popular, then yeah, I think we could see it sticking around. That's a good point. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, I think I would probably argue that Snuff Out 
probably doesn't really change all that much because um the there is still like even after the bans there is still no good black fair deck in legacy except maybe something like death shadow painter um, painter named like, black gg well <laughs> dude like I, I yeah i don't know what, what, what's up with the with painter servant but that card like painter seven is might be one of the most popular creatures in legacy like right now like it might even be in the top five or something yeah like, with with the blue painter deck as well probably is Oh, it's insane yeah, to yeah. me. I was going to mention yeah. the goblins, but yeah, there's another painter deck. At least one other painter deck. <laughs> <laughs> there's many of them out there. Yeah, just wait for initiative painter. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, should, should, we, should we quickly um, finish out how we how we did at the at the tournament and then we move into like what the meta game is going to look like yeah. going forward? So Kai and I are pretty fast. So Kai said, sorry to talk for you. Quick drop. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I, I, I had a one three drop on the main event, and uh, but a pretty satisfying five and one at the uh, legacy side event on Saturday. You got so lucky good. in one of the rounds. Oh Dude, my god. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I also had a lot of shitty opponents, except especially, <laughs> the, especially the the guy on the last round. Yeah, that would do. That uh, was a freaking beginner. So Kai and I were paired last round, and I was hyped for it, but he didn't know what kind of painter I was playing. I was playing a version with like two furies main deck no blasts no lightning bolts i had no blast cyborg even so i was so cold to cephalo breakfast and you you were playing really well because you didn't know but, that so you were playing yeah, around I didn't all know, this stuff i didn't know that and like <laughs> and, and but but you just kept mountains in play like untapped like the whole game Dude. like double mountains i did holy shit my like, hand was that, like two defilers a, like a scrapbook mutt, a like, Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Dude, I was so like, bad. that's at least three Pyro Blasts in your hand. So I'm not going to, like, so I kind of slow rolled, like, the whole game. Yeah. And then when I went for it, and then you were like, okay, I was really I, hoping yeah. that I would, you just wouldn't go for it, and I'd draw into the combo naturally <laughs> or something. I don't know. Damn. <laughs> that was just me being lazy. I didn't look up your crazy whatever. I had a Rector stack. I had the Transformer in it as well. Uh, what's it called? Oh, fuck, you did? Yeah. Did, did it ever do something? No, no. Uh, you, you're gonna mention what it's called now. Oh, I've forgotten what it's called. I need to don't you know? What, you, can you describe what it does? Can, can you t- like? <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on, I can't. I'm you literally just put out. it there for meme value. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's oh, what the hell is it called? It's black red. It's one black red. Oh, it's the bike, right? It's, it's three mana. Yes, yeah, it's, it's three mana. It's a three-two, and it has more than meets the eye for black and a red, which means you can play it. The, on the other side, which I'll get to in a minute. And then you can sacrifice an artifact to put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. Then you transform it and you put all cards with intel counters into your hand. I think you discard your hand as well or something. <laughs> and the, so the, so the other side, it might have another ability, I can't remember. It, it should hopefully. And the <laughs> other side is black and a red for a 2-1 death touch menace and it's a motorbike. And whenever it deals damage to your opponent, you put that many counters um, face down in exile with intel counters on them. And then you transform it. So if anybody listening to this actually understood what the card does, I know. because we have like a special prize for you. I don't really know. I played it once and it, then I, I died or they died or something. And I got people to read it. That was fun. I, I still don't know, really know what it does, but it's a three-mana artifact that's kind of funny, and you can engineer it in. So I actually played in a donation deck list the other the other month, but it, I think it didn't do. I, I just love that it turns into a bike. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I think I cut a scrapbook mutt for it, so the poor dog was missed. Maybe that was even for the better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was, yeah. But yeah, so that was that was. Oh yeah, main event. I very quickly I played more normal painter, and I was just off on the weekend. I didn't do great. In all of the events and i i look back on some games i made some really bad mistakes and you know those weekends where you're just like not concentrating properly even like muscle memory didn't do me very much justice so i i had lovely opponents they all played better than me and i think i went three three and then dropped to kind of hang out with friends and draft because i was just feeling a bit exhausted after being away the last few weekends as well and a bit overwhelmed with everything so yeah had a great time but just decided to draft instead and lost in draft as well. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I loved your modern deck, which is like this huge combo oh deck God. and the payoff is that all your creatures turn into five threes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking this is like you, you, you honored like Krata of Beamoth on Wish or something. It's like, and now for my final magic trick, all my creatures turn into juggernauts. It was, on- it's like, a, it's an inspiring spike deck. So I knew exactly what I was getting into. It was going to be bad, <laughs> but I was, I wanted like a couple of fun games and I played a German guy round two was on Jund. And we had our game two 
Oh, no, our game one was about 40 minutes long. I ended the game with like seven cards left in my library. I had I was fighting through like a, a Ren, he had a Renner Six emblem. I had killed 11 or 12 lands with a Sundering Titan going in and coming back, back a few times with Trash for Treasure. Uh, it was an absolutely insane game. So uh, that I got my fun there. I got my money's awesome. worth. Awesome. <laughs> cool. And for me, I went 5 on 1 in the, in the Super Legacy on uh, Saturday as well. Uh, nice. I think I played a bunch of Breakfast. Like, Breakfast was basically everywhere. I think I played it like 5 or 6 times over the entire weekend. I think um, Breakfast was tied with Delver for the most popular deck of the weekend. Might very well be, right? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. everywhere. So that was Saturday. That was really cool. Uh, only lost to uh, Matteo Blasi, famous Italian player, who always plays Canadian Thresholds. Uh, he's like... Is he nimble, nim, oh, nimblest is he nimblest mongoose, mongoose on Twitter? Nimblest yeah, mongoose. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he got he got me really good. Uh, but for all of the other rounds, got there rather easily, except for the last round against uh, Breakfast. Like Breakfast is always like also so interesting when when they eventually like go for the combo and you have to like find out when you're supposed to use your surgicals. And mm -hmm. in the end, it came down to or rather like I had fairies. In the end, it came down to he needed to mill like. A couple of Necro Mubas first before he got the Dread Return or something, and like it didn't really work out. But that was that was an amazing event. And in the main event, I started out really well. I started out four and zero, even though I was like pr pretty. I don't know. I, I felt a little bit under the weather. I uh, didn't have like a bit of a headache. And <laughs> in one of the games in round three, I literally forgot to put a, a um, Saga counter on my Saga on the second turn, but <laughs> I got there in the end. I also got really lucky against Grixis Control. In the final game against Grixis Control, I mulliganed to six on the play, and you can imagine, right, if you're like up against the control deck with Painter, and the idea is that you grind them out, uh, like literally grind, grind them <laughs> out, not like with Grindstone, and you mulligan to six, you're like, ah, oh, this is going to be rough. And then I, I just draw for for my second turn, and it's not, I think another Accelerator, and I literally killed them on the second turn. And <laughs> nice. I, I felt so confident that it's fine, right? I was because watching that as well. Yeah, 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 because they would also sign out the Force of Worlds, right? It's, it's yeah. like, it became pretty evident in the second game that they probably took out the Force of Worlds. So when I drew that, I was like, wait, I got the turn two kill and they tapped out in the first turn for Ponda. Let's just <laughs> yeah. go for it. Like, okay, handshake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's the, that's the, that's where you build your deck. Like, you just get those free wins sometimes. Oh, it feels so good. Feels yeah. so good whenever it happens. So yeah, that was four and off at the start. Then I got the feature match. I lost against the guy who ended up top eighting. I think Mr. Mr. Bond was his name. Eric the, Bond. The ten Eric Bond, yeah. Playing blue red Dama. Then the following round, I also lost to Andrea Mangucci. Uh, Shoutouts to Andrea. Played Grixis uh, Grixis Dama. I got to steal the second game by basically doing the Goblin combo on the turn on the second turn. One of the oh yeah, Welder into Engineer. With an Welder turn one, Engineer turn two with uh, maybe Lotus Petal or something, nice. and got uh, Chaos Defiler down. And Andrea later told me his entire board and hand was just like creatures, <laughs> just like, <laughs> no interaction, just like turn one Delver. And I guess the the idea was like then followed up with a bunch more creatures. And he was like, okay, um, he literally didn't do anything for the rest. And in the final game. Ah, uh, dude, that was th that's one of those situations. He uh, did he keep seven? I, he might have kept seven. I don't remember. Uh, and he, yeah, I think he kept seven. And my hand is one of those hands that relies heavily on Mox Opal, and you get like engineer into play. You basically you set up for an amazing next turn, but then your opponent on Delva, I think he kept seven, goes turn one Mystic Sanctuary go, and that should like raise alarm bells, right? I oh, think yeah. they have a meltdown in their hand. Let's see, you play Painter as well. Like, that's <laughs> literally what I thought as well. Yep. On the other hand, my, my hand was like, I can die to Meltdown now, or I can die to Meltdown, like, in two turns. Like, this is this hand is so so railroaded into into going for, for mm. basically Engineer and doing stuff with it, and, and then just hoping that there's this, like, tiny window where he actually doesn't have it. Because, I mean, technically, I guess you could imagine he some could other have, hands, like, but it's... Like a couple of cantrips, a wasteland, a bolt, and yeah. maybe a force. It, like, it's really hard to imagine. But, but I, I, think, uh, I think, yeah, going Sanctuary Go is just alarm bells. Yeah, especially if they keep seven, right? Because the, usually, like, if they don't have a turn one play, like, not even, like, a cantrip or something. Like, it's not like that deck plays anything amazing on turn two, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like they have, like, what, let's say Pyromancers or what the pe people play for uh, Ledger Shredders or something. Like, the deck doesn't have any turn two plays, so it, it felt like so much like Melton, but I had to play into it. And of course, he had Melton. Interestingly, he had to go Ponder, and on the last card on the Ponder, he actually found the Red Source because he didn't have that. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, he got me. I mean, that's why you put Melton on the deck. Yeah. So, yeah, from 4 2, I ended up at 6 and 3, I believe, which was not good enough for top 33. So I got like 42nd out of how many people? Like 380. 
Um, mm-hmm. I mean, that's still good. Like your overall record of the weekend was pretty great. Yeah, overall, like, and also it's so much fun. That's just like yeah. that's such a big thing. Like, if you enjoy playing your deck, even though I wasn't really feeling very well for the, <laughs> I say I'm not, I wasn't feeling very well for the first couple of rounds. So I mean, I went far and over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's wrong here? <laughs> yeah, I, I played against Murfolk in the second round, by the way. Dude, Damn. That was, yeah. Damn. Dude. Blast, blast strong, right? Yeah, Blast strong, but Blast didn't really do that much against True Nemesis and stuff. And I got so insanely lucky in the first game. Holy shit. Like, that guy, like, he, he had my pants down and was ready to, like, kill me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and like, my two, my last two draws at that point were Painter, Rhinestone, <sighs> GG. <laughs> this is how you win. I need to learn this from you. This is how you win, yeah. <laughs> and the second game, I think I got something like a turn two Plague Engineer down because, like, I was playing two, two in the sideboard. And, uh, you know, you sometimes hope for that random splash damage when you play against, like, I don't know, Goblins or, or anything, really, and then you, you're up against Mur- Like, Murfolk is even one of the better decks to play against that with, with all the lords, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, at that point you you produce boards. Like I, I guess once you have fury and blast, you you can make the entire board crumble. Yeah, I, I lost to goblins in the main event. Actually, I uh, forgot his name. Damn it, Spanish guy, absolutely lovely. So I dropped a draft with him and my friend Marcelo, um, and we just had a great time hanging out afterwards. But he like goes turn one, Cav and Lackey on the play, and I'm like, shit, I'm dead. So all <laughs> I was doing was like, I love you for playing goblins. That's awesome. Please don't kill my turn one goblin welder so I can block. But he had the expert into some other things and kind of ran me over. And game two, I got a plague engineer down and like kind of wiped his board. But he then like hit a Muxus on like the last turn before I got Defiler going and stuff. And he hit like Crater Maker plus Munitions Expert to kill the engineer and then just destroy me. I uh, had a Trash Master as well, so kill like all my mana and it was it was brutal. But he played it perfectly. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And speaking of like making a bunch of like red creatures, uh, I also <laughs> played round seven against Tim Langer from Germany. I think oh, yeah. TL underscore Falcon Eye. And I basically got to win that by doing the, the splinter twin from Wish Combo. You know what I mean? Splinter twin from Wish Combo. Yeah, you, you taught me, you even taught me how to do it, right? If you have two fa- two flip fables, oh, yes. you can both use, you, you can turn all of your unused mana into creatures at their end of turn, then you untap into like the big alpha strike. Yeah, that's, that's a fun one. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't have known that if you hadn't taught me about that. It's, Maybe I would have seen it someday, but yeah, it's because Fables played in so many formats. I think I didn't notice it myself, but I just like saw it early on and what you can do with Fable. Yeah, there's uh, also that, that thing like generally with Fable, um, when you actually use that Splinter Twin effect, because sometimes you do it in your own end step, right? Yeah. Like a common scenario is when you want to make a blocker for the opponent's turn, but mm-hmm. you also want to make sure that the the, co- the creature that gets copied lives while they are tapped out, because yeah. otherwise they could respond. It's like very it. common to make like a, a Goblin Welder or Engineer in your end step or something. So yeah. then you have that goblin token up during their turn to respond to stuff, but then it dies at their end of turn. And then it goes crazy from yeah. there. <laughs> I think the craziest thing I've had with it was, I might have mentioned it after the event, but the Axion Teams event, I played against Maverick, and they had an Endurance, some Knight of the Rickeries. Like They had a board, but I got to make loads of copies end of turn, and then bring in a Defiler, and I made seven or eight Defilers, killed everything, and attacked for like 40, 50 damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Loving it. Sometimes you just, uh, you Defile. Yeah, you defile. Yeah. So uh, when are we actually going to get defile on Magic Online? Didn't they say something like June? Do we still Q2. have to wait until summer? So in the next few months, hopefully. Every now and then you see a screenshot of like Warhammer 40,000 cards on Magic Online, but not collectible. I've only seen it myself once. There was one point where you could filter your collection to that set. And there was the basics. There was the source to plowshares. And there was one or two other cards. I looked actually like a few days ago and it couldn't seem like I could select the set anymore. It was kind of grayed out, but they're coming. I, it's, I think it's my gut instinct is a, a month or two ago away. Okay. Okay. So that's cool. It's that's coming. Cool. And the card makes such a like just monumental difference to the deck that painter right now is definitely not its full potential online. So yeah. it'd be yeah. fun. We, we can do more with those. Yeah. I cast a meteor golem last night. That's how desperate I'm guessing. <laughs> and for those who wonder, that's I think the seven seven. That's seven seven. Uh, when it ETBs, you destroy a non-land permanent. And how, how big is like three three it's a three, or something? Three. Like so, it's smaller stats. <laughs> so it costs two more mana, and it doesn't have the die trigger, and you can't pitch it to fury, and it doesn't have trample. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you played some some kind of wacky deck there. Uh, yeah, um, it was it was fun. This is a, it was a one time thing. By the way, Kai, I know Kai, you didn't play in the Legacy Challenges, right? You were you were busy skiing. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't, but I I saw the results. Oh yeah, we both played that, didn't we? We both went four two uh, five two, which is cool. yeah. I think we both went five two. We we got seventeenth and eighteenth place. Hell yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> God, 
Uh, and but, Julian was ahead of me. Like, it's just all the daggers. Of course. He's supposed to, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I always try and try playing Paint, even though, I mean, yeah, I would have loved to do better. I cut yeah. the, the Magus of the Moon from my deck. I played a really uh, graveyard hate heavy deck. I played four Ley Lines and three Surgical Extractions. And I ended up paying for it when I played against uh, the Fiend Artisan deck because that's one of those those matchups where, like, Magus of the Moon is really, really good. Yeah, I love Magus there. Yeah. But yeah, that, mm. that, that's really well. Do, 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 um, do we want to look at the results? I mean, it's only two events thus far, so there's probably not too much to read into it. But we... Should we, before that, should we give our impressions on the bands? Oh, yeah, and the, the bands. Yeah, yeah, you guys are so much better at structuring podcasts than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually just going off what you've written, so to be fair. Oh, I'm good at planning, not at executing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so for anyone that's been living under a rock, White Plume Adventure and Express Obliteration were banned. That was a week, do, 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 do. a week ago on Monday. Nobody yeah, so saw that coming. Eight days ago. Hmm. Yeah, everyone felt like something was coming and we weren't sure exactly what, like we knew something would happen to initiative, I think. There's been like a little bit of pushback from some people saying, oh, a deck that isn't Delver that's finally tier one is pushed back, but the deck was too good and it was, you yeah, know, that's it. It's not even fun. Like that, that's the thing yeah. about initiative. Uh, but yeah, I guess yeah. rest in peace initiative. Uh, there's yeah. already enough things said about it. <laughs> rest in something. And Delver, like people run short, like, I I think they could have banned two cards personally. I'm I'm fine with where it is now, but they could have like DRC and Merktide and Mystic Sanctuary all pretty crazy as well. So yeah, and Draymond Gucci is actually the guy who brought it up, right? I've seen him talk about it at Four Seasons for quite a bit, and Mystic also Sanctuary. on Twitter. That yeah. he, he's actually one of the few people who actually brought. I want to say the only person who actually brought it up because Bob Huang mentioned it a few months ago to me at least. Okay, okay, yeah, it's it, like, the, the idea's been out there, but it's been the other three cards that have been the focus of talk so yeah i think the drc is just like not the kind of card that we'll see a ban in legacy but mm -hmm. mark tide and and iteration yeah i mean I, i've been pretty vocal that i, I would rather see mark tide gun because iteration is yeah it produces card watch but it just mm -hmm. only gets you more of the same and sometimes like that doesn't really matter all that much but i mean yeah. it's still good uh, i just feel like it's yeah yeah like i can't i, I can't even say a negative thing about it it's just so I would have rather seen more tech game because wanna, it makes more non-games. I'm just pulling up the actual ban announcement was I wanted to just touch on like a little bit of what they said about the legacy bans, which um, I really, really liked what they said about expressive iteration and why they chose that, because it shows like how much they actually understand about the format, which I think is way, I think we all agree here, but it's way more than people uh, think. I think we've, we've had this conversation a few times where we actually agree with most of their ban decisions. And in in the article, we'll link it in the show notes, actually, so you can read it yourself. There's quite a lot of writing what they said about it. But they said, our choice is to ban expressive registration as the card quality and quantity it provides allows Is It Delver to easily adapt to stand off any changes in the metagame. In addition to removing generally strong card, our hope is that by removing expressive registration, we will reinforce Is It Delver's historical strengths, efficient one-for-one -one exchanges, and weaknesses, lack of sources of card quantity in a way that leaves the deck more vulnerable in the metagame. And that's what's always been part of Delver's wheelhouse. It's a tempo deck, right? Like you would, you know, in the classic Canadian Thresh days, you'd say like you would attack just for lethal, just when you run out of cards in hand, you, you use your last days to get over the finishing line. And so I think them pointing that out as a weakness, and that's something that they want to keep is, you know, we finally get to understand what they want Delver to be. And I think it's a, I think it's a healthy part of the metagame. I think it's a good policeman of the format, but you know, having it not able to outgrind and control is what they want this deck to be. So I think for future, you know, iterations of the deck, pun intended, we can kind of point out and look to this as... Oh, as... You, you're basically saying they, they established a baseline. Like whenever yeah. Delva is good and has a source of card advantage, that's <laughs> probably not what they, they want the format to look like. I believe so, yeah. I, I can agree with that. Yeah. So their, their choice now of iteration makes a ton of sense in that context. And when, when it hit, I was happy, like... I'm kind of sick of iteration and it's just in every single format as well, right? It's it's just like, what, what are you playing? It's just, yes, the format, iteration. But I've been even happier than I realized after playing the last week or so. You know, as we always say, as we always say, it's, you know, a honeymoon phase. Honeymoon phase, exactly. So Delver mm. is still good, but I don't, I don't like the whole, a lot of people are like, well, obviously Delver's still good. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. It's fine. But <laughs> it's not meant to be kneecapped. It's not meant to go like down to tier three. It's, I think it's still tier one. The early results from like the challenges is very diverse, very fun, I think, as well. There's new decks popping up and old decks resurging. There's literally no Delver in the top 
eight of both rounds. Yeah, from what I, can I, I think the deck is still really good though. Um, I mean, yeah, that that's like no doubt about it. Yeah. Like, there was still like very much tier one, and yeah. it's, it's so, totally depending on how people build it. Yeah, and I think the challenge results are also partly you know people just playing different new things. They're kind of bored of it. So yeah. Okay. Kai, what do you think about the bands? I th I, th I think I think we are currently in a in a like legacy players have fun type of period. Ooh. You know, <laughs> it's usually it's, it's, it's usually like the case Gross. like the first like three weeks maybe maybe like a whole month where people just like jam whatever they they want because they think that you know any deck is like tier two now, uh, which is you know it's it's not it's not wrong. Um, you don't sound I, as exciting, honestly. <laughs> no, no, like it, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. Like I'm fine with the, um, with the decisions. Um, I think that like cards like Uro, for example, they got much, much better. Mm -hmm. I think after the bans, like for me as a Doomsday player, like I am terrified of people picking up predicts. <laughs> I gotta say, like instead of uh, expressive iterations, because expressive iteration, and here's like the thing. I think a lot of people said already on like you know, on, on Twitter and podcasts and whatnot, that expressive iteration being gone from, from Delva um, is a good thing for Doomsday because Doomsday cannot keep up with iteration, but that's not that's not true at all because um, expressive iteration doesn't interact with what Doomsday does, right? It doesn't, it's not a counter, like they tap out a whole turn to do, to cast that card advantage thing, but that doesn't pressure your life total. It doesn't it doesn't really do anything. Like it's like a, a card advantage ponder basically. And ponder is not really threatening. Yeah. Um but if but if they play let's say like a predict instead, like that's another thing the doomsday player has to like play around. Uh, or even if it's like more creatures, like any literally any more like burn. It, more burn, more creatures, more more, more, more anything. like a traditional like, style of is a diver, right? Usually yeah, they're, they're like the fastest style of diver that we have. It could also be, yeah, it could also be like stifle, like who who knows, right? And like, but whatever they they play in the future, that's definitely worse for Doomsday. Mm -hmm. So um, so I yeah, like the matchup is already horrendous. Um, but <laughs> so like that now, it's like you, you can't even say much. It's just like dude, it's, you it's, know, the interesting part is if it's that bad. Then at, at some point it doesn't matter whether it's like minus eighty or minus a hundred twenty or something. Dude, like um, I'm, I, I think I'm like at a point where I'm like, dude, I have like five percent mid win percentage probably <laughs> versus Delva. Like that, okay, that's okay. like how I feel. But okay. th there's, but there's also, um, there's also like some some good energy because I've seen a lot of people picking up like some uh some older deck lists like Esper Doomsday for example is like it's like on the radar of some players. A uh, Buck Doomsday featuring Uro, you know, Teferi, Te Bellaful Strix, like those kind of like mid rangey kind of um, Doomsday palettes that try to just out value delver maybe uh, i mean you're uh, the, the, the doomsday expert but i never i've never been a fan of that well yeah i i've, I'm, I've done that in the past and it is okay versus delver the problem is like you lose to everything else yeah exactly see um <laughs> so but you know there's it there's nothing wrong about that and uh in fact i think uh but there's something wrong about it if you want to win tournaments like i'm <laughs> i'm pretty cutthroat at like shutting down stuff that i think is not the right way to win tournaments exactly I, I, I just, you know I much do... more about doomsday than i do yeah, well, I just hope that people start cutting predicts because predict is like <laughs> as, as, as good as predicts. In order to start cutting predicts, they need to put them in in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they won't This is more predict. like a meme, honestly. Uh, like, there's you, not going to be predict, seriously. I'll give you a medium hot take on what they might replace with this stuff is I think predict is worse than people realize. Um, the instant speed is nice and like you need a DRC in play or you need a bauble to look or you need to like set a up Delva. a cantrip. Or literally a any card, but, literally any card in the deck. But it has tons of enablers, but it has really awkward timing restrictions. EI was so good because I mean, nothing as good as is as good as EI, obviously, because it just got banned. But the timing restriction is actually something Delva really doesn't want. It wants to be able to play its card advantage thing, like turn four, or it wants to be a top deck, like so many times, or you want to Mystic Sanctuary back when you're both empty-handed. It just predict just doesn't play as well in the deck, I think, as people realize. But I think the best option I've seen so far is um, Reckless Impulse, which is the... It's awkward because it's not blue, so it doesn't pitch to your Force of Worlds, but it's the one red X of the top two cards of your library. Till the end of your next turn, you can cast those cards or play those cards. It's a sorcery, right? It is a sorcery. Yeah, I saw, I saw someone play it and was like, oh, that seems okay. And then it came up in like a Discord I'm in. Someone was making fun of it. And I was like, no, actually, I think it's not bad. So if you hit like a Force of Will or a Daze, you can play that on the opponent's turn? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I actually played against someone yesterday where I lost because they hit like a Surgical and a Daze. And I was like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, it's, it's not crazy. And I think ultimately we probably will see Delver not play these kind of 
trying to get card advantage cards. I think they'll lean on maybe counterbalance as card advantage, or they'll try and be more tempo oriented, or yeah. just play these big threats like Tarmogoyf again, or and Merktide as well. Like <laughs> exactly. going back into Rock. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, yeah, you could also you could also still play things like Norset or uh, yeah. what's it called the um, the thing where you become the monarch. Um, Court of Cunning. Court of Cunning, you know yeah. things like that in the sideboard. The sideboard I, like, yeah. I, I don't like people have also like streamed um painful truth i i don't believe that that card is like good enough it's just um, a man too but, much right you know i yeah. mean there are options like they're not as good as, as um, a situation but yeah. they're still good what i liked about predict though is like um like good legacy gameplay is also when like when your opponent c- control opponent goes like mystic sanctuary back terminus and then you predict it, it away <laughs> yes that's pretty cool i think <laughs> uh. um so so that you know so i ha- like Predict to me is like, dude, it's like love and hate at the same time. Because like the, on the one hand, I really don't want to see it as a Doomsday player. And mm-hmm. on the other hand, I think Predict also has a lot of cool gameplay to it. I um, I, I absolutely adore Predict. Like, you don't that's, that's, like, that's like, but... dude, that's like the old school, like, AJ Sahar. Uh, <laughs> yeah. thought, thought, thoughts go you, your stuff, you know, whenever I feel like it yeah. type of well, uh, gameplay. Think about it, like, the cooler it actually is because it's not like it's it's gonna destroy doomsday right you still like gotta know what you're doing and and there's a little bit of luck involved uh because it's like a, a game of bluffing it's pretty hard for doomsday to play around because like is yeah it, is it really because like, I mean, you, you put, can you, you can put kill in... an oracle with the trigger on the stack and then if you go and try and draw your last card they predict you or something no no, no. Exactly. see see that's what i'm saying but you, you yeah. build the pile differently like you put two orcas in and you you know that you're gonna get like access to both of them and then you you just do your normal thing with an empty library well, the, 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 the skill is like getting to. Not, I mean, it's not that complicated. It, Dude, seriously, it's like, like you know, the way you say it, it sounds so easy, but it is actually the opposite of easy. No, I'm, like, like, I'm, I'm thinking about it from the other side. Like, I'm thinking about how am I supposed to use predict against against Doomsday, and it's like not self-explanatory. Oh yeah, like I mean, most of the time, I think what what's best is if you just follow your gut feeling and then do exactly the opposite because <laughs> like you know because like you, you gotta be thinking like okay so my, my doomsday opponent probably made a pile thinking that i have predict you know which is uh which is okay and then you're gonna predict them on the most awkward timing mm-hmm. ever and that's probably like the spot where you just hit them yeah but and, even um, then you only hit one oracle and the idea is that you could put two oracles in the pile well yeah but if you put two oracles then you probably can't like, like what, what what if the devil player never predicts the doomsday player like what if that then, happens that's then, just another cycler what? <laughs> i mean it's not it's what i'm saying is that you you guys are painting predict as the instant win against doomsday and i think it's actually it makes for good gameplay because both players have to really like think about their steps and how, how to properly like use i think just from both sides yeah, i think I, you're I, underselling I, how hard it is I, for doomsday dude, I, 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 you know, I get, that's what i'm saying I, that's amazing it's hard for Delva and it's hard for doomsday no, I think it's pretty yeah. easy for Delver. Delver just doesn't cast it and like has a Pyroblast up or a Lightning Bolt or whatever. Yeah, Something but then like you, that. you straight up lose to, to Kevin of Souls. Well, no, but, like, no, you need to, if, you, if you're going past the turn piles, you then should predict when they have one card left in the library. Yeah, but then they, that means that they have the second Oracle in hand. No, no, you do it on the like, end of turn when they have one card left. And then you yeah, get but what if they have two? Like, that, that, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if Deva is like cognizant of that and they're like, they're passing with two cards. No, no, so, so if they have two cards left, you don't cast to predict. If they have one card left, you do cast to predict and then they die. If they try and go for it earlier than that because they see that's what you're oh, doing. Okay, see, so then, you're saying. Then, that, then, you, then they cast an oracle with like one card left in the library and you can, you can, you can bolt, bolt, okay. you can bolt it or you can pyroblast it. If they then put a, if they like cycle a, Cycle yeah, that, at that's, the end. That, that, that's that, that, then they predict it and then they die. So how do you beat that as, as Doomsday? Like how do it's you so clear hard. the last card in your deck for, without like a draw step? Yeah, the, I mean the short answer is you don't uh, because like every every turn you um you pass versus a Delva like post post Doomsday, if you pass two turns you are technically dead. No, because, you're not like, passing two turns. At, at best you're passing one turn, right? Exactly, and but you can't it, pass two turns. Right, but you know you gotta pass a turn, like knowing that you could also die to maybe like double wasteland, maybe on the mm-hmm, turn. Like mm-hmm. you never know. You yeah, but know, that, 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 that. that predict doesn't change that. Predict well, pr- like yeah. predict is just another threat they have on top yeah, yeah, sure, of sure. all their. Other See, that's bullshit. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to make <laughs> like I, I thought like you guys were really uh, overselling predict as instant GG, which I think it's not the case. I think in addition to what they have, it's like. You can beat Delva, you can beat a Bolt and a Pyroblast with the Cavern Piles, mm-hmm. but those involve lots of cyclers and Predict takes away that agency to an extent. So it's basically like another Stifle, kind of, which is like kind super of. hard to beat. 
Yeah. Or dress down or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pr- pretty much. Pretty much. So it's just yeah. them playing like main deck dress down or stifle. Which Stifle mm-hmm. is kind of making a comeback as well. Sorry, Kai. <laughs> oh, dude. Poor Kai. They're going to be playing like Stifle and Predict. Actually, that, that's one of the most common things that I've seen. Like people just putting Stifle back into Dava decks. Yeah. Which I guess. I gotta. Say, I gotta say though, like if, if that ever happens, then I like I gotta play Defense Grids. Like, and that's that, that's mm-hmm. maybe like the, the the beauty of Legacy is that like you know no matter what happens, there's there are more than enough tools to uh, you know, to, to um to play around the hate. Like, yeah. There there are it, like. Carpool is gigantic, yeah. so, uh, you know. But mm-hmm. I, I don't think Predictor is going to stay in the Delver shell anyway. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> um, Something I've seen people try out is Charter Course. For those yeah. who don't know, it's uh, Sorcery. Is mm-hmm. it Sorcery? Yep. Yeah, yep. it's uh, colorless and uh, blue. You draw two cards, and then unless you have attacked this turn, you discard a card. Yeah, so I've seen people play it in the shell with 12 one-drops. So four Nimble Mongoose, four Delver, four DRC. And it's kind of kind of <laughs> cool there. But, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what I don't like about it, I mean, of course, nothing is gonna be as good as Press of Iteration, but mm-hmm. it's certainly like it's not a card that you look forward to, like Mystic Sanctuary back on your deck, right? And if it's no. like a top deck war and you draw that, it's like, no. oh yeah, I guess draw two. St- it's it's draw like draw two, discard one is not as loot. good as ponder, take two of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. As I said, I think Reckless Impulse is the best version, but I think ultimately none of these cards probably really make it. Mm. But Quickly touching on blue cards and Delvery things, I want to just have a bit of a re-evaluation on Minor Misstep because I chatted a ton of shit about it when it, when we were first talking about it. And um, I was completely wrong. This card is really good. It just, you know, I, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of thinking, you know, can never trade up on mana. But what I didn't appreciate is how it hits cards that otherwise don't really get hit by hard counters apart from force of will which is then card disadvantage namely like source of plowshares lightning bolt pyroblast like these cards yeah, and cop the flowers threats in the late game i just never really understood or appreciated it just countering a source of plowshares on a merc tide to put it really simply or a pyroblast on a merc tide yeah and this is really good it's really powerful to just i've had so many games now playing painter where i'm like trying to pyroblast a merc tide i'm thinking right there like they've got one mana up they can't Pyroblast my Pyroblast, whatever. Or maybe they have a Hydroblast, but like my name is Step just hits hits the, all this removal for this Tide. So yeah, I I've completely turned a one eighty on my name is Step, and I I don't think it's like like too good. It's a reactive card, and my my understanding is reactive cards in the format can only ever be so good. It's the proactive cards that are the best ones. But I think this is this card is just absolutely a legacy now, and I think we'll probably mm-hmm. see two as pretty stock in Delver soon. Uh, could be three, and I think Control will play three uh, as fairly yeah. stock as well. It's very, very good. Oh, yeah. I have some impressions. I think Minor Misstep and uh, Merktide Region especially like go super well together. Yep. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of like old modern Death Shadow days when, when you go like Death Shadow or Gumek Angler plus Stop on Denial. Yeah. Or like, or, like, yeah. or like Dispel, you know, something like that. Which spell? It's basically a d- Dispel, a counter-attack <laughs> instant. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Uh, go, sorry, but, uh, but uh, like, but uh, like, like one blue counter target source of plowshares is insane. Yeah, like, yeah. because that is because a lot of games in Legacy, like, um, they they come to a point where, okay, well, they got the smoke tide, and it's like, do you have to plow or not? You know, if the, if you don't have to plow, you're probably dead. And like, it it's kind of like the uh, and then like they do, t- and they're still dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like you know, and also like misstepping a misstep is also like not terrible i i, I kind of dig those gameplays a lot also get um that minor misstep hits brainstorm really hard is mm-hmm. also something i really enjoy because brainstorms a lot of people like i'm gonna say this now people should counter more brainstorms that card is insane mm-hmm. i'm i you know i I'm like why am i even saying this in 2023 <laughs> subscribe well, to uh every dead tunnel where you hear this uh hard hitting dude the- yeah, Something. that's this crazy new instant <laughs> from Ice Age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the art of when to counter brainstorm or not, or even like when to counter sometimes Ponda or not, I think that's that's one of the beautiful things mm-hmm. that are also really hard to teach, right? Where exactly. I sometimes do it and people later come up to me like, why did you counter the brainstorm? I'm like, dude, this is like, yeah. there's like seven different things that go into that right now. Like it depends on what I could draw, what the opponent could draw and everything, like how the tempo of the game works out, how quickly I think I'm going to finish. There's so many things going into it. And... Uh, it, it's it's a work of beauty and mm-hmm. I, yeah. I laugh when when i when you do it because you you got like a kind of read on what your opponent has in hand and it's really shit and then you counter the brainstorm and they feel like oh finally i get to convert and you're like no nope, not this time 
dude so <laughs> many brainstorms are like clenching your butt like god this oh, needs dude. to resolve so badly <laughs> yeah dude yeah and like and like there, there were there was power blast before but power blast has such a big task of like you know between destroying Merktide regions countering show and tells iterations mm -hmm. i mean that, that card is gone now but like power blast has such a huge target like um on on like things it has it has to hit like you re like sometimes you can power blast a brainstorm but it rarely happens but minor misstep though it, it's a little inferior i think in in general to power Just blast <laughs> but like but i think like if if you are uh, if you minor misstep a brainstorm, it, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. Where like if you power blast a brainstorm, it's kind of like a so-so trade. Yeah, I mean that goes back to the idea of like strategy and like which roles your your cards are supposed to play in a certain matchup. And as you mentioned, right, power blast hitting Merktide, that's one of the most common roles that power blast is supposed to play. So, sometimes it was supposed to hit, uh, let's say, if your opponent gets like a really aggressive Delva draw or or expressive duration if it becomes grindy. But even like in Delva, right, we didn't often pyroblast expressive iterations and, and were rather trying to hit the creatures and stuff. And yeah, Minor Misstep kind of slots into that role, right, where, where it doesn't hit the high end, the actual payoff, but it, it hits like the early assault, like mm -hmm. you, if you hit the DRC or the Delva, or you hit the, the utility that they play or the remover spells. So it, it plays a different role. And one yes. of the keys to, I mean, uh, I sound a little bit full of myself when I say that, right, but one of the, the keys to doing well in Legacy is... is using your spells for the roles that you assigned them to when you when you like created your strategy for the matchup mm -hmm. it's also going to be like you know you are incentivized to snap it off a bit earlier than a pyroblast where like you're kind of pyroblast is almost like you're taught with the brainstorm you're trying to hold on to it because it's such a high power card but you're going to snap off a minor misstep on these early cantrips especially brainstorms and so i think that might mean we need to have the people playing brainstorm have a little bit of a readjustment on how they play like you might want to be even more incentivized to play brainstorms earlier or when your opponent is tapped out when they couldn't misstep it if you really rely on this brainstorm so you play it earlier lose a bit of value off it but it's still going to resolve it's those kind of things so, it's interesting when you say yeah. you play it earlier because the other scenario i could see is where you actually play it later when you have a fetch land available so you can play it on the opponent's turn and still get full value out of it because traditionally right we, we talk about like main phase brainstorm and how that usually gives you the best value as opposed to like a brainstorm in the opponent's mm -hmm. turn but if you have the fetch land available already and you you want to get that fetch land out then you could play it on the opponent's i don't know depending on how the game goes like upkeep and maybe tie up their mana for a turn a little yeah. bit yeah yeah I, mm. I was mostly meaning just like when they're tapped out so they don't have the option but upkeeping it as opposed to end of their turn when they after they make a land drop could make sense in some situations as well just trying to reevaluate your your um heuristics yeah. for casting brainstorm you know, i also like the idea of playing minor must and control decks uh i'm also seeing i think angelo played absolutely was it two or three i think like he, he played he, yeah three 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 copies yeah one three of one of the, the little deck. cogs in my brain that realized that I was very wrong about the card was watching him play against Yanis. Yanis was on a Cephala Breakfast and he had two or three Oromis Chants in the deck and he's playing against Angelo and Angelo was snapping off missteps on those Oromis Chants which are usually like Force of Will or Dead kind of cards. Oh, that's, yeah, that's okay. such a great card against... against so Angelo. I was just like, damn, this it completely changed the matchup. It made Oromis Chant look actually a bit silly in a weird way because he the, the game had grinded on, he'd cast a bunch of iterations so he had access to these cards but it's like, damn you can just counter the shuko counter the nomads and call counter the orum's chant like like it's nothing just snap it off yeah and also that's that's a role that flusterstorm can't always play right Be yeah because sometimes against flusterstorm you just pay for the storm and Yanis had off. like five mana and it was the first mana he tapped to just cast a chant and i could see his hand he had the kill so if the chant resolves he dies but no mr easy <laughs> you know i was just gonna say you know in many ways this is actually very similar to mental mister like yeah duh. <laughs> God. <laughs> we've got all the high tech here <laughs> they, 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 yeah. the info the, it was all out there we just have to connect the dots <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah the, the the idea of playing in the control deck then is that you literally get to slow down the opponent while also having some mid and late game value because legacy is so heavily based around one drops mm. so if, if i'm playing a four color control deck there's even a world where I don't play my turn one Panda, right? Because I might be able to mental mess up like a DRC or a Delva or something and mm -hmm. buy a lot more time. So to give totally. me like more breathing room. Also like late late game Pandas are usually stronger than early game Pandas, yeah, you, I would say. Unless like yeah. you're, you're trying to, and, and even if you're trying to find that second land, right? A turn two Pandas is even better unless you really want to cast that two drop, which is not very common for color control. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, like, you know, I'm not a control, like, super, super expert, but, like, if you are a control deck and you, you, you pawn the turn one like that, I would say, like, 99%, you're probably only looking for lands or a force of will. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. like, nothing nothing else really. Because, like, why would you ever 
know what you're looking for, like besides lands and free counter magic, maybe. Yeah, and, and that's actually a really good point because then minor misstep fills that that's gap, right? And you, and you get to try to get better value out of your partner. Dude, yeah, I'm that the card is growing on me. We, mm -hmm. I think, uh, as Keller mentioned, we maybe trashed it a little bit too much initially. Uh, because we're mostly thinking about like tech tactical aspects, but strategically, I I like it. Oh my yeah. my my original trashing was nothing to do with tactics. I was like, I didn't <laughs> think the card was good, and I was like, whatever. I'm a podcast host. Let's go hard on this. Let's 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 own let's it. Have an like, opinion. Let, let's have an opinion <laughs> on this fucking thing. And yeah, it's so wrong. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's hard. Okay. <laughs> Loving it. So my, my actual oh, take was a bit more reserved. I was like, I, I could see it a bit more, but I thought, you know what? Let's let's just do it anyway. Yeah, you, you you know a card is good when it actually gets played against you. I mean, I've I've played uh, a, a lot more Legacy now now that uh, the bannings have happened, and when it gets played against you, it feels bad, right? Because we mentioned how technically it's only trading even on mana, but I've had many situations where I got mental misstepped, uh, minor misstepped, and it actually felt bad. So in return, it must have felt good for the opponent, and mm -hmm. you know that's that red starts creeping uh, in on you that you feel like oh this card is actually better than I thought. Yeah, I had a. A game against shark still uh, a few days ago as well where like oh, i wanted to win this because I, I had just trophied the league oh before, you did <laughs> and i and i was 4-0 in this league so i was like right i want to want to get the double trophy in a row and then game three they had like a teferi turn four with one mana up I'm like it could have been hydro blast but i blasted it thinking okay well if they hide blasting back that means my fable is living because i had it in play but they'd source the token mm. but then they got to mind and misstep the blast and then untap and like hydroblast the fable and stuff and uh it just like was really good against painter as well so i don't i don't really like it <laughs> oh maybe that's why it felt so bad so yeah. good against me <laughs> dude guys do we quickly want to go over what did well in the two challenges on saturday and sunday i think both yeah. were pretty big the saturday one hit over 64 people i think we played seven rounds and we've, the sunday one hit 108 we've got one new card just at the bottom that is probably in the top eight should we just go over this one quickly should be oh, somewhere yeah, right. this artifact Dude, it's a new hot hotness. So this like, is, this has been around dude, since is... like almost coming on to like eight nine months, I think. Yeah, dude. Wait, this card has, has been around for that long. It, it's the same set as White Bloom. <laughs> dude, so, so people yeah. are sleeping on a lot of shit. Yeah, it, that, this, is, this, this isn't this is an artifact equipment that is like literally like a DIY new White Bloom adventure, right? <laughs> or like, chase. So, uh, we're talking about the t trail. Blazer's Torch, um, in combination with Stormforge Mystic, uh, which is, uh, well, your DIY uh, White Plume Adventurer, because it, it gives you the initiative on turn, well, three. three. Turn three. Actually, <laughs> actually, actually, that's not even a good replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe uh, we Just like White Plume was always cast in turn three as well. Yeah. <laughs> Playing yeah. planes, 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 planes. That's what Shark <laughs> intended it when he created the Undercity. <laughs> what makes this so good, though, is it's a tutor uh, quick, Quickly, wow. should, should we go over what the card actually does? Because it's a people full minor equipment, it. ETB, take the initiative, essentially. I mean, dude, dude that the second text has been relevant against me, like, quite oh, really? Often. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I went to, like, double and triple block creatures, and I was like, actually, I can't do that. Okay, fair enough. So it's, yeah. Artifact equipment costs four mana to cast. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative and then equip for one. Whenever a quick creature becomes blocked, it deals two damage to each creature blocking it. Yeah. I literally lost because of that ability. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to like triple block a creature to kill it. And I was like, fuck, man. Just can't. This, this stupid table is a <laughs> because it's going to clear out all of my blockers. Fair enough. Right. It's. But so why it's mostly good as the initiative thing, but I can see that coming up. I mean, it's 99% the initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just like, it's something you can tutor with Stoneforge Mystic, and so DNT is playing it, basically. And also there's like a a Bant tempo deck. Have you seen the nickname for this? Uh, I've seen, oh, I've no, seen yeah, Bara, Mark yeah. Koenig, bring it back at some point. By the way, shout out to Mark. He's, yeah. he's been one of the very first Legacy streamers I've seen him play. You think he got a top eight or something? Yeah, did somewhere? he have the torch in it? Uh, I don't know, but he played Bant Stoneblade, so yeah. I almost thought he might. He played Bant Stoneblade, and then people were testing it and then i know luanil and i think luna might be the first xj also did well with it they put it into dnt and apparently it's super good there because you can tutor it up with stoneford mystic or you can choose the stoneford mystic with the recruiter and so it's so good with stoneford mystic because you get to bring it in end of turn so you get the first ability and then you're untapping and getting a second trigger off the initiative straight away so it's much easier to protect and the decks playing silver mystic are also playing swords and solitude and stuff so it's similar but i think dnt is even better at protecting it than initiative was oh you're right i just looked it up by the way mark, mark didn't play that he just okay. played played straight up on stone blade with yeah true nemesis and yeah the shell was around people were kind of messing with it uh, he might have got the first kind of thing posted but i think i'm pretty sure it was luanil who put 
the the torch in the deck and it's apparently really good loads of people have been doing well with it so yeah we've now got to deal with trailblazer's torch in the format as well yeah i've seen people call it basically a chase that you can put in with a uh, stoneforge mystic yeah yeah <laughs> it certainly feels a bit like it <laughs> and it's and, a like you mentioned, right? yeah <laughs> it's so annoying when when they put it in at your end of turn step and then immediately they go into the second dungeon you yep. feel like oh, dude i didn't even feel like i have a chance to react yeah, to yeah. this so that the the band tempo is called, called bampo just so you know Oh no, please no. Bampo. I, I've seen somebody post on Twitter about that and then somebody <laughs> asked said, no, no Italian deck names allowed. Yeah, Bampo. Is, yeah. Bampo, is it really Bampo? Yep. I'm pretty sure it's not going to stick. It's going like to stick. It's going to uh, stick. Get used I mean, to it. I'm, I'm not going to post it, but I don't think it's going to stick. Ba Bampo. <laughs> what, what is it even supposed to be? It means Bampo. Say? Do you not get okay. it? Okay. Not really. No, it doesn't mean anything. It's just Bampo. <laughs> okay, legacy deck names. You know, yeah. you're getting too old when legacy deck names stop making sense. It's to probably you. <laughs> it's probably a cereal. Just imagine that Italian cereal. Yeah, yeah, it's an Italian cereal. There we go. Okay, okay. So cool. challenges. Is the card actually gonna stick around? Because I saw it like memed all over the place on Twitter. I think so. Really? Yeah, yeah I think it's real. Ah. Yeah. So what do you do again? Mm, um, mm. you can't even dress down it. Stifle, I guess. Or just attack them. Or play Doomsday. Ooh, next level, next level. I don't know. Just, just kill <laughs> them. Like, yeah, just kill yeah, them. You, you, I was... you know what I think about Stoneforge decks? Okay. I, ha I mean, I haven't really seen it in in in, act uh, in Cephalid Breakfast just yet, but like the more I think about it, like Cephalid Breakfast is also pretty good at keeping initiative <laughs> and also like stealing the initiative. Like, dude, I mean, the, the, the number one reason why Cephalid Breakfast has been so popular is because it has a pretty positive initiative matchup mm -hmm. which automatically means that you know it's pretty good at stealing the initiative but if you play a stoneforge mystic uh type of build and you put you put this as a one-off instead of that shitty cultural complete mm -hmm. that that could be something you know i love that if you showed me this card nine months ago and it's released saying like this is gonna go in cephala breakfast that can kill you turn two <laughs> 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 this is like if you if you had shown like, the stars before like we discovered the powers of initiative and people were like dude this is the new chase we were like sorry what yeah <laughs> i think i think the actual jokes aside takeaway is that initiative was so so slept on as just a mechanic and even still was when mono white was destroying the format like it was only been now so under mountain adventurers just come on magic online that's the green initiative creature and already it's like kind of spiking online and in in real life and it top eight one of the challenges over the weekend and trailblazer's torch has just been added finally after white plume got banned this mechanic is just crazy strong and it was so slept on it's quite it's, it's wild yeah. it's almost like the fable of the mirror breaker effect where fable was massively slept on in every format for a while and now initiative is everyone's waking up to like any car that says you take the initiative it's probably pretty good i wonder how whether we're still going to see new ones of those but i think people should try not. playing the, the blue one more there's a four mana one five or something Ooh, there's sneaky, more of them there's a sneaky asterisk oh fuck my life yeah <laughs> it, the good news is now the white plume is gone they all cost four mana there's one artifact that costs three but you then need to like it comes into play tapped you need to then sack it so oh so it's also like basically a Everything essentially costs four or more now, but um, okay. I mean that makes yeah. sense. I'm I'm glad that's a good place for it to be. Yeah. So initiative did well on the weekend. I think we we got what is this green red initiative in both top eights uh, as one deck. And yep. as you mentioned, there's gonna be four under mountain adventure in it. That's um I, I guess most people have seen it. It's a uh, four mana, so three colorless and a green mm -hmm. three four giant warrior mm -hmm. vigilance. When it comes to play, you take the initiative. It taps for two green. And if you've completed the dungeon, it taps for a six green. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you take that. You say that. I cast a Primeval Titan with that <laughs> last week in the league. <laughs> I don't even want to start asking questions, but this is amazing. <laughs> I, I went, I went two three in the league. Yeah. It was a bad deck, but I'm just saying, you know. Was that the deck where you? No, that was a different. No, oh my no. dude, you, you're brewing again. I can't wait. To yeah, see yeah. I played some that. really bad. I was on holiday mm. last week, so I played some such bad oh decks last okay week. so you, you, your your family was drinking and you were breaking legacy breaking my <laughs> breaking my tick account <laughs> okay that's pushing it no yeah. so i i guess that that green red initiative deck very much looks like what you would expect it to look like the only thing that i noticed is the only place is seeing a copy of minsk and boo at least here actually i, I the other think one. that list is not very good i'm gonna go yeah there. the other one actually that, that's uh gravy 98 plays four copies of minsk that makes yeah. a lot more sense to me so I uh I posted in like a Discord I'm in just saying like well now this 
this adventurers come online you just like the strength of red green is minsk and boo and eight spirit guides yeah eight spirit guides is nuts mm -hmm. They're so good in the deck. So you just play the eight soul lands, and then you can play turn one four drop. The deck is, the deck is nowhere near as good as white initiative. Thank God, I'm pretty sure. But it has some insane starts. Your the whole deck's game plan is play a four drop turn one. So I don't think it's very healthy or nice for the format to have this deck in it. So I don't know. I, I enjoy playing a few leagues, and then I'm kind of like I'm off it already. But it's very punishing for stuff like lands or non blue decks or decks without access to like fury or solitude. I think you just need like interaction immediately or you're in a lot of trouble so did you did you play against it with painter i haven't played against it actually yet i've played with the deck against painter a couple of times okay but um i've played okay. i think i think painter is a good game into it you have bolts and furies so yeah something i noticed with painter that made me feel pretty good about the matchup was that unlike the the white initiative deck which had uh, touch the spirit realm and solitude this deck doesn't really have instant speed removal so you no. can feel pretty good about like if, if you craft a plan like this is how i killed a creature with fury this is how i'm gonna steal back the initiative and you know against white initiative all of that come crashing down when they had like the solitude or touch the spirit realm or something yeah. or even the yeah. sorts of plowshares whereas here you can feel very positive about being able to steal initiative and it's not that easy for them to steal it back since they usually like need two spirit guides and i mean yeah they get the land but i i felt pretty confident about that unless of course they had like some crazy cyber cards but yeah i, I think the, the deck might evolve into something better i'm not sure where it goes but the whole game plan of turn play a four, four drop turn one is pretty strong but yeah it, it doesn't protect it the way it protects the initiative is just by playing another thing that takes the initiative back like that's mm. that's the whole deal but so white stomping could do that as well it also really struggles with big creatures uh like murk tide and so you have like Pyroblast and run afoul, but when I was playing it, you get just completely destroyed by Tarmogoyf. You cannot beat a Tarmogoyf. <laughs> um, like, you have to just be faster and, like, you have to hope your creatures survive, but yeah. Just big creatures with a bane of it. Uh, Shadow as well destroys it, and you're kind of Ooh. a bit weak to, like, Baleful Strixes and stuff. Uh, the deck has a lot of flaws, luckily, I think. Yeah. I don't see it taking any over legacy anytime soon, honestly. No. Like the decks that have done well on the weekend, other than that, is like eight cast had a really good showing, eight cast uh, and eight cast painter, which for quite a while has been one of the best decks in legacy. And as is tradition, right after our ban, we see blue red sneak show like straightforward, just like <laughs> sneak them out, yep. uh, take the top spot. Yep. <laughs> uh, what else are we seeing? A black red reanimator, um, uh, legacy all star at this point. We see dragon stompy coming back. Like there's been a lot of talk about that, right? That the dragon stompy has a spot in the major game again because mm -hmm. it's it felt like straight up worse than white initiative, but now it's back. That was weird, wasn't it? Because I think it was actually quite decent against white initiative, but people just played white initiative instead because it was better against the rest of the format. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we see it come back. Mm -hmm. Also, always a soft spot. We see Ferrarix going, uh, I don't know if it was undefeated, but basically winning the Sunday Legacy Challenge with straight up just elves. Mm -hmm. like, nothing Heck fancy. Yeah. I, I guess he might have played a Traxa. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's a copy of a Traxa. Uh, is there a dinosaur? There's no dinosaur. Actually, help me out. What's the name of the dinosaur again? You, you, you're pretty Rex. hyped. Uh, what does it do again? I, we talked about this in Bologna, and I've it, even it, seen other it, people it has, bring it up. It has like it has like all the text. I think this card. It I is. think this card's really good. So, <laughs> okay, how, how much time do you? Have? <laughs> I I can tell you off by heart. I love it. It's four and triple green, so seven mana total. It's an eight eight uh, dinosaur something maybe. It can't be counted. It has haste, ward four, trample, and toxic four. Oh, wait, so, wait, toxic four so it, it'll kill someone if it hits you three times and it's an eight power trample thing ward four means like it costs five mana to swords it or like four mana to bounce it with a teferi or something so or four mana to snuff out i guess yeah four mana stuff out so you know by the time it comes down you're often like either natural ordering for it or hard casting it but it's pretty hard to interact with um and what, what makes it better than progenitus i guess that you can hard cast it it just was attacks the planeswalker the same turn as well is pretty good and you can oh, hard cast haste? it yeah haste is pretty good ah. but also just being able to hard cast it like so i played it in some natural order with attracts of kind of mid-range shells and i kept like drawing it thinking oh this is so bad but then i just kept casting it and <laughs> it was really good to just cast <laughs> so i don't know i also saw um luca toselli one of the italian players he's toss a look online i think i saw him playing a bunch in reanimator which you know, if you just reanimate it turn one, like Archons and Grizzlebrands can lose the game. This one's very hard to lose if you get it turn one. But I wish it had lifelink. 
<laughs> yeah, it should have oh, more text. I mean, now I'm making the case for a truck star, which is the card that I'm pretty much opposed to. But actually, I'm not opposed to a truck star. I'm just like, yeah. I guess that that's something for the next cast. We're closing in on two hours now. Uh, okay. I have a lot of thoughts about a truck star. We can do an Atraxa uh, cast at some point. <laughs> the Atraxa cast. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I think, but... I think Dinosaur's good. I, I, it's, it's like, it just slots into Natural Order or some, some decks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall, guys, if, if there was a big tournament coming up uh, this weekend, what would you guys be playing? I mean, for me, it's definitely Painter, uh, Kai. Uh, I'll probably stick to Doomsday but and hope that no one plays Predict. Dude, it's so crazy. Like, you you guys have that big obsession with, like, pay, with Java. You, you're not the only Doomsday player who is, like, you, you have, like, some serious PTSD about Java. Every time <laughs> yeah. I talk to Doomsday players, whether it's you, whether it's, like, Martin Nielsen or something, you guys are like, dude, we are the kings of the world unless Dava comes along. It's just, like... Yeah. <laughs> Which is like literally the most played deck. But, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> maybe it goes down. Maybe C Delver finally mess share going down. Yeah, yeah. I'll. I actually have a tournament this weekend. We have LLM on Saturday. I haven't decided what to play, but yeah, probably be painter again. I don't know. Anything I just think fancy and and painter. No, I don't know. I just I just want to play with Defiler more. I don't know. Is there a way we can like make Trailblazer trail blazers torch? Ah, oh, no, it's four mana, right? So yeah, uh... yeah. I, I, there is a three mana artifact you can engineer for, but and it, it gets the initiative. But you have to like pay it, ETBs tapped, and you have to pay two and tap. Oh it yeah, and yeah, sacrifice yeah. You, you mentioned it. that. Yeah, um, I did receive four Under Mountain Adventurers and four Caves of Chaos Adventurers in the post yesterday. So <laughs> maybe I play that, but I don't know. You know what? Actually, I think I might just play Rug Delver. Weird, like crazy, what? but with Nimble Mongoose and Tarmogoyf and Stifle. <laughs> like, I, I was just looking at some like deck lists today on Twitter at work, and I saw Tarmogoyf and stuff, and like, ah, I want to play some Tarmogoyfs yeah. in Delver. I, I really, really am tempted to do that. So we'll see. Let's go to town with Tarmogoyf. Like, yeah, nice initiative, dude. You can't block this. Here's my five six. <laughs> Unless they put the Trailblazer Torch <laughs> on their creature. <laughs> the thing is, I don't own Merc Tides or DLCs, and I don't plan to. So. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's Nimble Mongoose time. <laughs> tell tell yeah. us how that, how that worked it's, out. It's, I know it's bad, don't worry. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I might play in a, in a Munich Legacy on, on Friday, I want to say. Oh, God, Friday is so hard to make work. Anyway, we'll see how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think that's going to be it from us tonight. Guys, you guys anything to add here? Should we talk about Attractor now? We've got a couple of hours spent. Oh, no, God. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. That was fun. Preview, I hate that card. I think it's okay. actually no preview. I, I I hate the current deck that plays it. I think a track side is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my TLDR for, for next week. Awesome. So yeah, that's that's gonna be it from us today. Brave New Legacy. Super excited to see how it's going down. I've had a lot of fun. Like I wanna say, like this week I played more legacy than in the entire two and a half months before it, which oh, is like same. I did. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're enjoying Legacy as well, give us a shout out to your friends. Let everybody know about Everyday Channel. Um, tell them that we don't come out every day. <laughs> For another case of false advertising, of course. But if you enjoyed the show, uh, consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts so we pop up in more searches. And if you want to support the running of the show directly, uh, make sure that we get to actually eat and have fun. Um, <laughs> I'm very bad at selling the whole Patreon thing, by the way. <laughs> Patreon.com slash everyday channel. Join the community, join the Discord. Have Callum sell you an even more Warhammer. He's by now responsible for 0.5% of the whole revenue of Games Workshop with how many people he's brought into it. <laughs> if you want to find us on social media, we are at EternalMTG on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on It's Studio 23. You can find Kai on Savatarix. And you can find Callum on Callum Smith MTG on Twitter. Nice. Shoutouts to everybody supporting us, especially our Eternal Witness tier supporters, Savatara Orico, Tommy Hinks, Testacula, Sebastian Hollager, Guillaume, Sean Dewey, Francis Kauper, Cassandra Davis, Benedict Gruber, and Severin Schwarzuber. And our Grizzle Brand tier, should we rename that to a Traxa tier supporters? <laughs> Victor Benatz, <laughs> Pachi Butts, Scott Monroe, Jeremy Gates, Henry Cockwitz, Tom Hepp, Andrew Whitman, Kane, Ian Seifert, Fritz Sternert, and well, Paragon Games and St. Louis, I know you don't exist anymore. You still exist in our hearts, and I'm excited to do to hear what Scott is going to do with it in the future. Everybody have a great time. Let us know what you are going to play in the next Legacy meta game that we are about to enter. And see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye.